Oh, there he is. He's over here already. Okay. Okay, Mr. Marshall, you have a quorum. I do believe I have Mr. McDougall from the attendees over into the panelists. Um, I'm going to rename that phone number. And I have 632. Amherst Media is here with us in the house. I think you're good to go. All right, thank you, Pam. Welcome to the Amherst Planning Board meeting of June 21st, 2023. My name is Doug Marshall, and as the chair of the Amherst Planning Board, I am calling this meeting to order at 6.32 p.m. This meeting is being recorded and is available live stream via Amherst Media. Minutes are being taken. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and extended <laughs> by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2022, this planning board meeting, including public hearings, will be conducted via remote means using the Zoom platform. The Zoom meeting link is accessible on the meeting agenda posted on the town website's calendar listing for this meeting, or go to the planning board webpage and click on the most recent agenda, which lists the Zoom link at the top of the page. No in-person attendance of the public is permitted. However, every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the meeting in real time via technological means. In the event we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship or despite best efforts, we will post an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting on the Town of Amherst website. Board members, I will take a roll call. When I call your name, unmute yourself, answer affirmatively, and return to mute. Bruce Colden. I'm here. Tom Long. Present. Andrew McDougall. Andrew, are you able to hear us? Present. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, I, Doug Marshall, am present. Janet McGowan. Here. Johanna Newman. Here. Thank you, Johanna. And Karin Winter. Here. Thank you. Board members, if technical issues arise, we may need to pause to fix the problem and then continue the meeting. If the discussion needs to pause, it will be noted in the minutes please use the raise hand function to ask a question or make a comment. I will see your request and call on you to speak. After speaking, remember to remute yourself. To the general public, the general public comment item is reserved for public comment regarding items not on tonight's agenda. Please be aware the board will not respond to comments during general public comment period. Public comment may also be heard at other times during the meeting when deemed appropriate by the planning board chair. Please indicate you wish to make a comment by clicking a, the raise hand button when public comment is solicited. If you have joined the Zoom meeting using a telephone, please indicate you wish to make a comment by pressing star nine on your phone. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name and address and put yourself back into mute when finished speaking. Residents can express their views for up to three minutes or at the discretion of the planning board chair. If a speaker does not comply with these guidelines or exceeds their allotted time, their participation may be disconnected from the meeting. All right, so the time now is 636. And the first item on our agenda is the minutes. We have two sets of minutes this evening. We have a May 3rd minutes and June 7th minutes both from 2023. And uh, so board members, why don't we do the May 3rd minutes first? And uh, does anybody have any comments or edits that they would like to make to those minutes? Otherwise I would like 
uh, look for a motion to approve the minutes as drafted by our our staff. Tom, I see your hand. Move to approve the minutes as drafted. Thank you, Tom. Uh, I will second the motion. Are there is there any discussion on the May third minutes? I do not see that. I do not see any hands from board members. Okay, then why don't we go ahead and vote on the May third minutes? Uh, we'll start with you, Bruce. I approve. Great. Tom? Aye. Andrew? Aye. Thank you, Andrew. Janet? Aye. Johanna? Aye. And Karen? Aye. And I'm an aye as well. The motion passes unanimously, seven in favor. So we'll move on to the uh, June 7th minutes. Likewise, are there any comments or would anyone like to make a motion to approve? Tom, you're, you're the fast man tonight. Motion to approve the minutes as drafted. Okay, thank you. Anybody I'll else like to second that? I'll second. Uh, thank you, Janet. Uh, Andrew, I know you raised your hand. Maybe you were hoping to second. I okay. wasn't as fast as Janet. Okay. Um, all right. Any other discussion for this evening of these minutes? Nope. All right. We'll go through it again. Bruce? I approve. Tom? Right. Andrew? Aye. Uh, Janet? I'm going to abstain because I wasn't there. All right, thank you. Johanna? Aye. And Karen? Aye. All right, the motion passes. Six in, I'm, I'm also in favor. Uh, six in favor and one abstention. All right, so the, the time now is 6.39. And we'll move into the second item on the agenda, which is the public comment period. Uh, at this time, I see seven attendees. Uh, I will uh, list. I will. I will read their names as they appear in my participants list. Uh, Jamie Fitz, Fitzgibbon, uh, Fred Hartwell, Hilda Greenbaum, Matthew Lacroix, Pat DeAngelis, and Scott. Zhang. And I see one. So, so at this time, members of the public, you are invited to raise your hand and I will call on you for uh, your comments on items which are not on tonight's agenda. So that would exclude uh, everything that's listed as a particular business item. Uh, it excludes the zoning bylaw amendment proposal. And um, so I see one hand. Uh, Pam, can you bring Jamie Fitzgibbon over into the uh, participants so he can speak? Good evening, Jamie. Uh, please give us your name and your address in Amherst, and uh, you have, will have three minutes to speak. Well, hello, thank you very much. My name is Jamie Fitzgibbon. Um, I am actually Superior Plus propane and I apologize if my hand was raised um, because I am part of the conversation in regards to 63 Main Street. Okay, thank you. We will we will get there eventually this evening. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any other members of the public who would wish to speak? Okay, I'm not seeing any hands from any members of the public. So we will end the general public comment period. And it's now 641 and we'll move on to the uh, next item on the agenda, which is the zoning amendment. Pursuant no. to chap- It's a site plan review. Yes, site plan review. Do I have that wrong? 
site plan review for 63 Main Street, 635 site public hearing. All right, then I'll read what's on the printed revised agenda rather, rather than on my opening comments uh, file. Sorry, okay. Mr. Marshall. <laughs> no problem. All right, so the third item is the public hearing site plan review, SPR 2023-05, real property management, 61 to 63 Main Street and 69 to 71 Main Street and 4 Boltwood Avenue. Request site plan review approval to operate a restaurant with associated site changes, including along abutting parcels in accordance with section 3.352.0 of the zoning bylaw, BG zoning district, map 14A, parcels 258, 259, and 304. Uh, board members, are there any disclosures for this topic? I do not see any hands raised. Okay, um, in that case, we will welcome the presenters from the, uh, the proposers. Uh, I see uh, Jamie Fitzgibbon is back and Matthew LaCroix. Um, so, would either of you like to start off and introduce the project to us? Sure, I can kick off. Um, do I have a three minute, three minute timer? No, you, you get to go on uh, okay. as long as we can stand it. Gotcha. <laughs> I'll keep it just short of that. Um, so I'm Matt LaCroix with Real Property Management. Uh, so we have put together a, a site plan review to allow the opening of the restaurant Lao Hu Tang um, at 63 Main Street. Um, in order to do that, we've had to make some pretty serious changes in terms of how um, we power the, the cooking appliances in the restaurant. So due to the, the statewide moratorium on natural gas, uh, we had to pivot and um, look to use propane gas uh, to power the cooking equipment. So the site plan review has proposed the use of uh, 11 tanks, um, eight for 63 Main Street and eventually three for 61 Main Street, um, as well as all of the pieces that go along with that, the, the bollards um, and um, breaking up the windows and making the surface similar to uh, what's there uh, currently. Um, so that's what we're looking for. We've already gotten approval from the design review board. Um, if we're able to get approval tonight, we are in talks with the town already for a licensing agreement to share the, the concrete pad uh, behind the, the property as well to hold um, the propane tanks. All right. Um, did you want to show us any of the materials that you've prepared or you know it seems like we're doing a site plan review we ought to look at a site plan sure yes i can certainly do that let me share my screen um, all right are you able to yeah uh, we see your screen i think uh there you go now you're bringing okay. up the site plan okay so this, um, this here is the 61 to 63 Main Street. Um, so the right side is 63. That's where Lao Hu Tang would be. And um, Scott Zhang is on the call tonight um, to represent the restaurant. Uh, so what we're proposing at the back right-hand side of the restaurant, we would need four uh, propane tanks with the appropriate bollards to, to protect the tanks. There's two windows here, which will be closed um, with either brick or, or block and then stuccoed over to match the, um, the current surface that's there. Uh, this piece of property here is a concrete pad um, that's kind of shared with 69 to 71 Main Street. We've, we've got an approval from Kendrick Property Management to use that space, uh, as long as we continue to allow them to use the, the space in the back for for trash cans, which we're perfectly fine with. On the back right corner, 
uh, would be the other four tanks with the six bollards here in orange. Um, these again would be installed by Superior Plus Propane and, and Jamie Fitzgibbons on the call um, for any questions related to propane. So these eight, these would power the cooking equipment for 63 Main Street. Um, and then when, when we get a little further along with places for 61 Main Street, um, we would look for three uh, of the same size tanks and three bollards there. And then the, the request to the town, we're, we're in process of doing a proposed license agreement uh, with the town manager and the town attorney to allow us to use the concrete pad that's here. Um, so right now you can see with the blue line, some of it's on the, the current owner's property and most of it's on the town's property. Um, so we're asking for use of that um, piece of property. All right. Um, this looks like a lot of propane tanks. Um, have you reviewed, is there, has the fire department seen this and is there any concern from anyone uh, there? So I can answer that. Jamie Fitzgibbon again with Superior Plus Energy. Uh, I've worked closely with the town of Amherst, uh, uh, Jeff Olmstead in regards to this plan for these number of tanks. And the reason for the number of tanks is the energy that's needed to use that kitchen uh, far surpasses what was there previously. Uh, so it's about almost 800,000 BTUs of kitchen equipment, which does require the propane. And that's why the need for the number of tanks that we have here on site of eight. And yes, I have spoken with Jeff Olmsted at length and we have applied for the permit, uh, both the plumbing permit uh, with uh, Tim Kitsa, who's the plumber, and for the storage permit with the town of Amherst as well. Okay, great. Um, board members, uh, comments, questions? Janet, you got your hand up first. I, was, I wasn't racing, but I, I did have questions um, about the number of, not just the number of the tanks, but the fact that they're open to, um, they're sort of easy access and they, and I wondered if some screening would be in order if somebody could interfere with the tanks or the valves for it pretty easily. And it just seemed like they were really close to the building and they were really close to people, you know, or people driving by. So I just wondered about screening and um, I'm glad, I, it sounds like the fire department is okay with it, but I'd be, I think I'd rather wait for a letter too before we okayed it. Um, so I, that was my, my concern about the tanks. So with it, may I, may I respond to that? Sure, Jamie. Janet, thank you so much for those questions. That's always a concern. Uh, what we do with the bollards, because they have to be the height that they are, which is three feet, uh, <laughs> that makes it very safe. And yes, obviously people are going to be people, but the ability of them of destroying the tanks or damaging these tanks is almost impossible because of the material that they're made out of and the way that they are built. Um, and it would be, the worst thing that could happen is they could turn off the propane. There's really very little way for them to rip anything away from the building. So this is a very secure setup. Thank you, Jamie. Janet, any other questions? Um, so that was my question about the tanks. And then one of the questions that was raised in the um, development report was about um, trash pickup being twice a week and if that's sufficient. And then the other issue was um, loading and unloading in that kind of tight alley. Um, and, you know, obviously other restaurants have been there and dealing with that. And it made me wonder if people in town hall had experienced problems with loading and unloading trucks. So that's sort of a question for Chris. And then a question about where is the unloading and loading going to take place? And is there sufficient room for cars to get around? All right, thanks, Janet. Chris, would you have any comment on that? I don't have any comment, but Nate may have comments. He's been following this case more closely than I have, and he may wish to comment on this. All right, Nate. Sure, yeah. Um, I think the uh, issue with the deliveries is, uh, 
you know, on the left side, as you're seeing, where it says 76 feet, that's the alleyway. And, you know, if a truck were to pull in, there's a back door, right, where there's a little jog in the building. Sure. Yes, right there. Uh, that's where they're proposing to bring things in. If a truck were then to try to maneuver through the parking lot and leave town hall, if the parking lot were full, a truck couldn't maneuver the parking lot unless it was a very small box truck or almost just like a delivery van. Otherwise, it would have to back up onto Main Street and leave. And so on Main Street, on both sides of the street, the meters are for commercial unloading in the mornings. And so you can take over the first four, the four parking spaces across the street. Mm -hmm. And we could, you know, and then there's free 15 minute right in front of town hall on Main Street. And so, you know, the concern would be if we allow deliveries in that alleyway, would we want to limit it to a certain size truck or time of day? Um, and I think the trash and grease removal is really important. So we're having issues with other restaurants in downtown where, you know, they'll have a, a pretty big drum for used cooking oil in the back, which isn't shown on this plan. And then they have a ton of cardboard from packaging. Um, and, you know, they'll, they'll, it almost needs to be taken out daily to a dumpster. And so to hear that these four trash cans would also serve the neighboring rental property and the restaurant just makes me think that it's not sufficient. And the concrete pad is really not big enough to support a dumpster. Um, yeah. And so I, I, you know, from what we're seeing with other restaurant establishments that you need almost a, you know, a more frequent trash removal plan yeah, so, so just to clarify, uh, there, so there's currently four um, bins there. There's two trash, two recycle that are used for 69 to 71 Main Street, and then the apartments above use that as well. The restaurant would have their own um, that they would add. So there would be two additional barrels and one recycle, and those would be picked up twice a week by USA trash and recycling. So they would have a separate, um, same company, but they would be on a, a more accelerated schedule to pick that up. It still sounds like that's not enough containers or delivery pickup. All right, um, let's keep that in mind. Uh, we'll go on to Tom, you had some had your hand up next? Yeah, thanks, Doug. Um, I just wanted to comment that the design review board had looked at the placement of the tanks, the security of the tanks, the application of the bollards, um, the uh, plinth or concrete pad they're on, um, the changes to the windows, and it approved it from a sort of safety and aesthetic perspective. Um, I don't think that trash came into what we were trying to approve at that time. So I don't know if that's part of what we're approving today. Um, but I do know that um, from a, an, an aesthetic and functional perspective that the design review board had approved um, the plan as is. Just wanted to make that clear. Okay, thanks, Tom. Johanna, you are next. Thank you. Um, you asked about our reactions. Um, I'll admit I don't love it. Uh, my biggest concerns are around public safety in the event of a fire and just having this density of fuel like in the heart of downtown. And then I also have concerns about it a little bit from a climate standpoint. You know, we as a town are, I think, trying to move to renewable energy as much as possible. And so the idea that we're like putting in place close to a dozen propane tanks downtown i don't know gives me a little bit of pause so i'm i recognize that switch that fuel switching for cooking is a major investment for a restaurant but i am interested to know whether the applicant in the course of this process considered moving over to electric cooking and whether that's something you know that they have considered and ruled out for one reason or another okay uh, Matthew or uh, maybe Scott? I don't know if, if Scott can speak. I know we had the conversation with the fire marshal about equipment that could do it. Um, the equipment that this restaurant already has in place um, was originally set up for natural gas. 
um, but due to the moratorium, we're unable to get that delivered to the restaurant. So natural gas is out. Um, but again, the equipment already being set up that way, the next logical step was propane gas, uh, which is more cost effective um, than, than electricity would be in this case. And I don't know, Scott, if you can speak or Jamie, if you want to address that, um, especially the, the safety piece as well. Yeah, I, Again. I, I see Scott still among the attendees. So Pam, can we bring Scott over? I'm working on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jamie, you have you were starting to say something? Yes, I'm, uh, thank you so much. So uh, just a, so the way that the propane has worked, it, it is considered a green fuel. So if you were building a building, this is LE, this is LEED certified. It is considered a green resource for fuel, even though it does basically come from fossil fuel. In addition, the way that the tanks are designed, should for some reason the tanks get punctured, the pressure in the tank, in, excuse me, in the tanks drops so quickly the tank freezes up, and then from that point the vapor evaporates into the air. Uh, so it's it's really a very, very safe form of energy to use in this instance, uh, especially considering the number of tanks that are needed to operate this business. So again, should the tank get punctured for any reason, which would be an incredible amount of force, uh, the pressure would drop in the tank, it would freeze the tank, and then the any anything that's in the air would evaporate into the air. The only time that there would be a, a problem if somebody had uh, a source of ignition. So, for example, uh, a car at high speeds hit the back of the building, uh, which I think with that congested area is pretty unlikely. But again, it, it is a very safe form of of energy, especially for this case for the restaurant. Jamie, how are the how are the tanks refilled? So it we would have our uh, what we call a bobtail. So it's about uh, it's a smaller truck, and our plan is to be there before town hall opens first thing in the morning, as to not interrupt any anyone in town, especially using that parking area, and the actual filling of let's say all of the tanks all at once would probably take about between 30 and 40 minutes. Uh, that's why we are intending that when these tanks do get filled, it will be before town. And in addition to the tanks, they will have uh, monitors on all of the tanks. Therefore, we know that when the tank gets to be about 30%, then that's when we'll come and fill them up knowing that it has to be before town hall opens. And your bobtail can navigate the parking lot in the back? It's small enough? It, it is, it is. It's about the size of, uh, it's a little larger than one of the town ambulances. Okay. Um, Hannah, did you have any more? I had one more question, which is what's the estimated frequency with which the tanks would need to be filled? So we're estimating based on the hours of opening and the times, uh, basically on hours opening and knowing how the cooking is done, it's probably going to be once every three to four weeks. Right. I'm hoping it would be much more frequently because they'll be so busy, but in the greater scheme of things, it's probably going to be once every three to four weeks. All right. Johanna, are you all set? Okay. Bruce, you are next. Um. I was going to just ask a question about the um, the the, the uh, filling schedule and so forth. But but first of all, I I, I don't think I've ever heard in fifty years someone uh, uh, propose that uh, propane is a green fuel. Um, I'm inclined to give a fairly hostile reaction to that proposition. But why don't I just say, just for my interest and possibly everybody else in town. How the hell can you uh, represent uh, propane as being a, a, a green fuel? It is actually, a, that's a great question. It is actually a collection of gas off of the refining process. So we are capturing everything that would ultimately go into the air, which is why it's liquid propane. So it's already being refined. 
uh, through that process. And again, I'm not a big fan of fossil fuel myself, uh, but because we are essentially recycling things that would be going into the air, that's why it's considered a green fuel. Okay. Um, I guess I've heard that defense in relation to uh, foam plastic, so we'll leave it at that. Um, my question had to do with the, uh, although I, I'm really wanting to pursue Nate's question about the trash, because that seems like the biggest problem, but further to uh, um, Johanna's, Johanna's question about the filling frequency of one every once every three to four weeks, I think we were also concerned uh, but maybe we're not. But let's find out. Uh, there, there was some suggestion that the uh, that the uh, trucks would come in before eight thirty and after four thirty. Uh, I may be confusing that with trash and so forth, because maybe your truck is less large and it can come in at any time. But uh, would you be uh, uh, unreasonably constrained by a condition that uh, uh, limited your um, arrivals to prior to 8.30 in the morning and after 4.30 in the afternoon? Uh, no, our trucks are typically on the road about 6 a.m. Um, and whatever the town bylaws uh, would allow us to, we would be there as soon as possible uh, because we do not want to interrupt anything that goes on in town or at town hall. Thank you, Jamie. Uh, Doug, I think I'll leave that there for now, but I'm sure we need to look further into this trash thing. Thank you, Bruce. Andrew, you are next. Thanks, Doug. Can folks hear me all right? Yes. Great. Um, uh, thanks for the presentation. I, my comments actually are kind of parroting what uh, Janet mentioned uh, and what Nate had followed up with. I think uh, I, I like the idea of screening. Uh, maybe as a fence, since uh, there will be more tanks here, and it is uh, a uh, you know public parking lot at the front. And then I do, I, I would also agree that the pickup frequency needs to be increased, and it doesn't seem like that would be uh, too onerous on on this. Um, not saying necessarily more barrels, just pick them up more often. Um, you know, in, in my house, um, I can fill up a barrel pretty fast on on a on a particular week, so. Um, if nothing else, just a plan for those uh, those situations where you might have some excess. Let's let's just get it out sooner. And also, I just uh, Jamie, thank you for for sharing some of your um, your subject matter expertise on this. Um, it's not often that we get to hear from uh, from the kind of the business side of the uh, equation. So I appreciate that feedback. Thank you. Yeah, and just to be clear, uh, and I know Scott's. He's in the in the panel now, but um, USA trash and waste can pick up as often as needed, right? So we we assumed twice a week based on you know however busy they are, but if they get more busy, we can increase the frequency. And just you know, at, at one point in the past, there were two restaurants there operating. I don't know what the trash situation was then, um, but I certainly think we could you know work with, with USA to make sure that. Um, that stays under control. Thanks. Yeah, I, I would. I would think maybe instead of um, starting light and accelerating, you start heavy and then maybe uh, ratchet back. So Decelerate. maybe yep. you're, maybe have that pick up. You know, every other day. Um, you know, uh, planning for weekends or however that works. But I think let's let's go more often and then pull it back. Okay. Um, I Janet, I see your hand, but um, Nate, is there who is, is there sort of a property manager at Town Hall that would be the person to coordinate with uh, you know the with the applicant on whether there are any problems developing on the trash pickup? I mean, it would be you know it could be like Rob Morris staff. <clears throat> you know, I, I often look out the window <laughs> back there, but. Yeah, I mean, I, I you know, I think that um, it's it's something that previously when the restaurant was in use, I mean, there would always be cardboard boxes just floating around the concrete pad, and sometimes they'd be in the you know off on the pavement, and so it's just you know it's really a matter of the frequency, right? If there's only a room enough, I mean, the plan only shows four, but now we're hearing that there's probably going to be at least two more trash cans and then a drum for uh, used cooking oil, and so 
uh, you know, that one pad that shows the four containers will actually be pretty full. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I was trying to go back in Google Street View quickly, and there's something from 2018 that shows uh, six, six containers back there, but that's where the propane tanks will be, and, you know, and there's cardboard just kind of laying around. And so, you know, I, I don't, I think the frequency is the, is the concern. Um, yeah, I guess, and, I guess the question is, do we need to uh, impose a condition? tonight that uh well i think i mean a condition could be that the trash be kept in the receptacles and you know something that if it's you know if it's if it needs to be picked up with more frequency it is right so that there's no you know loose trash or recycling on the pad or on the interior alleyway or the doorway entry um yeah i mean one thing i was going to say quickly is that the board is approving the use too so it's not just the propane tanks it's you know, the restaurant use itself in terms of any, anything that's happening out front, you know, I think there's two lights by the doorway. They're not proposing any new lighting or signs, but I mean, that could be clarified, no outdoor dining. And so, you know, just that the, this becomes a site plan, not just for the propane tanks, but for, you know, the restaurant use itself. And so I don't, you know, unless there's any other questions in terms of lighting or signage or outdoor dining, which it doesn't seem like they're proposing anything, but we could clarify it then, the only exterior change, right, is this back piece that we're looking at now. Right. Is that is that correct, uh, Matt? Yeah, that's correct. And in the management plan in the pack, um, there was a management plan that had the there was specific questions for the restaurant, and uh, those were answered. Yeah. So no outdoor dining, no additional light changes. The signs were already approved. So it's really just the propane piece. Um, and then Scott's working with Susan Malone on the on the um, food establishment license. The menu has been updated. The floor plan has been updated. Um, so I think that's progressing well. So it's really just the the back. Okay. Uh, Janet. So I just I wanted to go back. I, I think it was somebody else's comment. Um, I thought they were talking about deliveries. Um, not just trash pickup. So I didn't, you know, I'm just wondering, is it going to be, I mean, this, these places have been restaurants before and um, do we want to require them to, you know, use the parking spaces across the street and just come across the street with kind of heavy stuff. I mean, this week I was watching this really large pickup truck back into the spot between um, the black sheep building. And I've forgotten, um, um, it's a the Mason Hall, tiny, tiny, you know, driveway, and he just hit it perfect. He didn't hit anything. He just nailed that. And I wondered, is that a problem? Like if they just back up, unload, and get out in 15 or 20 minutes, is that normal? I mean, do we is that a problem? Has it been a problem? Is it okay for them just to do their normal thing? Or I don't know what people think, or um, I don't want to hinder the restaurant because I think it seems like a great, you know, it's great to have it there. But I'm just wondering, is the delivery system going to work or create problems? Or we could also maybe say, recommend the sites across, spots across the street as much as you can. And if a problem, we could sort of kick it to the building commissioner or something. I don't, I don't want them to keep coming back for little things because that just seems like it slows things down. But I also want to like head off problems before they happen. Yeah, and, and just to clarify um, Nathaniel's point earlier, the alleyway into that side door is for 61 Main Street, um, but they could obviously come from the front as well. For 63 Main Street, there is no door along the back. It's either the front door or through the alleyway, there's a door there that goes right into the kitchen. Uh, but those I think would be serviced from the front of the building or across the street versus behind because there's no door there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Karen. Um, yeah, I I was very impressed with how beautiful this restaurant's going to be, and I think it's very exciting that this is coming to Amherst. Um, the propane, the screening. I agree, it would be nice if there was screening, but I think it's so close back there that uh, probably it's very difficult to do. But I think if you 
I think this is something that um, that has to be, you know, you're right under the eyes of town hall. So I think the relationship is going to be uh, watched very carefully and worked out and hopefully um, be satisfactory and can be tweaked. But um, it's it's impressive. And um, I wish I wish you well. So I think I agree that I I was very hesitant with this much propane, but it does sound like it's going to be safe. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to tamper with it. And um, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, I'm I'm satisfied. Okay, thank you, Karen. Are there other comments from the board? Bruce. Yes, uh, I think I'm satisfied with the with the absence of screening, um, partly because there is, um, well, there's only cars there. There's there's not a lot of uh, activity of what we might call quality activity. Let's say, I mean, I just made that up, but I guess people know what I'm talking about. Um, I think that. If we were to screen it, the only possible screening that I can imagine would be something like a fence or something that's thin. You couldn't do it with vegetation. There's simply no room for that. Um, so then we have the problem of the fence, uh, which is much less uh, robust, uh, uh, you know, uh, in 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 so far as being whacked by a tr by a vehicle or something than the bollards. Um, and uh, I, so if we were to put the bollards, then a fence, then the uh, uh, tanks it would the fence can dilapidate uh it it'll stuff will it will will get inside the fence waste paper and stuff it seems that we would be creating perhaps possibly creating more of a problem particularly as the fence becomes more dilapidated and um, won't be maintained and so forth it'll interfere with the just ease with which the tanks can be looked after serviced and so forth and i don't think that we get very much for that, so I think I'm satisfied to with with a with a without obligating any uh, um, screening so far as the tanks are concerned, and I suppose the same is true as far as the trash cans are concerned. And the reason for that would be if there is uh, if they are messy, then I think we'd want to see them rather than uh, trying to imagine that we could screen them. All right, thanks, Bruce. All right, I don't see any uh, more hands from the board at the moment, so I'm going to go to the public comment. Um, so members of the board, members of the public, are there any of you that would like to make a comment on this application? Okay, I don't see any hands. Um, I know, let's see, I think Chris sent us some draft uh findings and conditions for this project uh nate i see your hand here thanks yeah i mean the other thing that was raised in the development application report uh one other thing was the issue of you know third-party delivery drivers like doordash or others and where they would park and so you know again this is something that we're seeing with other restaurants in town is that they often double park or park at their convenience whether it's in the alleyway now between the buildings or in the parking lot and so you know i think that's something that could be considered um as part of a condition and so you know like i said it's not anything against this restaurant but it's just something staff is you know we hear about that with these types of services we you know there's really not like a planned space for this type of quick pickup and so oftentimes they don't want to feed the meter or you know go do a put coins in or something and so um you know that's and are they that was only one other issue are they eligible to use the commercial spaces across the street or not that's for commercial loading and unloading that wouldn't be during the day they end up becoming a metered space oh okay so yeah all right um i see three hands i'm going to go to chris first even though she was the last of the three chris do you want to make a comment yeah i just wanted to comment that i put these conditions together without consulting nate although I did consult his development application report, so he may want to um, 
make some suggestions about adding or correcting any of these possible conditions. Okay. Um, that's all. All right. Well, it's, it does sound like we already want to add a condition about the trash and keeping it in the containers uh, and making sure the pickup is frequent enough to allow that to happen. Uh, Bruce. Um, Doug, I was just going to ask uh, Nate whether he's uh, whether he can type in the conditions, uh, whether he can edit this uh, thing that we see on the screen or not, because if so, that would be a mechanism for for developing a, a list of conditions. Because, I mean, I, I I think at this point I'd be prepared to move a, a acceptance approval of the uh, of of the site plan request, uh, subject to conditions, and then we would like to be able to track those conditions and we've got a good start but as you pointed out uh, or as Chris pointed out there's clearly a couple more that might want to go in there mm -hmm. um so Nate do you have the that that word document and would you want to do the typing or should we have uh someone else do that Nate if I put it back up there uh there you go Nate's got it perfect and Nate, you are muted. Yeah, I'm. I'm good to go. Uh, if people want to, you know, throw some out there. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, Bruce. Oh, I, I would defer to Andrew because I think he had the salient uh, uh, condition related to trash, and then possibly one related to the uh, the grease as well. A Andrew, are you good to go on that? Um, yeah, uh, you are we good if I talk, Doug? I'm not sure I understood that. No, I'm, I just was asking if you were recognized, if you would recognize me, that's all. Oh, yeah, sure, Andrew. Yeah, I, I'm not sure the best, uh, thank you, um, Bruce. I'm not sure the best way to put it in here, but I think that, you know, the, the spirit of it is, uh, aspire to have more regular pickups and then you can slow them down if needed. So I don't know how, how like explicit we need to be in the language, but you know, it seemed like it kind of every other day uh, cadence would be probably appropriate to start with. But again, for language here, uh, I don't know if it's just like more regular than um, expected or, you know, I would defer to anyone else who has some better thoughts on it but um yeah i mean the spirit of it is just to make sure that we, we have you have a sorry about the noise there okay thanks andrew now it looks like nate you're doing your typing Onto the surrounding pavement. Yep. Um, Bruce, you, you, say, you still have your hand up. Are you there? Is additional comments or not? Well, maybe I could. Uh, say, so number six would be uh, similarly with regard to the uh, uh, waste uh, uh, cooking oil um, uh, disposal. Uh huh collection of waste cooking oil. Um, and uh, while he's doing that, uh, well, maybe I'll let Nate type. So yeah, I mean, they do have a waste management, um, sorry to just jump in here, and a management plan. And so I guess it would just be to ensure that it is actually collected on a regular schedule, right? I mean, that's yeah. the idea is that they would somehow get it into the drum out back, and then they would, the, the company would actually then, you know, vacuum it out of the drum. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
if I uh, and they do want to uh, impose the uh, same eight uh, prior to eight and after four, uh, is it possible to uh, impose the prior to eight a.m. and after four on the trash pickup, or is that uh, uh, because that's that's an even bigger truck, right? Is that in the management plan? It, it would. It was just as it is today. So they're currently driving back there today to pick up the four that are there. So it would just be a continuation of normal or as is. Okay. Um, we didn't. We didn't specify a time for trash. Uh huh. Chris, I see your hand. Yeah, I think the trash pickup is pretty quick. So even if a truck does go back there, it doesn't really block traffic for very long. So I would say that the trash pickup, the timing of that is probably not as essential as it is for filling the propane tanks. Thank you. Good. Understood. Uh, and there was one more. Um, oh, yes. Number seven, if it's not already there, is that uh, DoorDash and similar um, third party uh, um, entities uh, restri uh, uh, restrict their uh, uh, parking to uh, Main Street. So that's, I mean, I, I, I don't disagree with it, but I think it may be difficult for the, the owners to enforce that. Um, Doug, I was thinking that maybe they don't have to enforce it. It's just a mechanism for if it becomes a problem behind. I mean, they, they might find that in the evening time uh, that they're okay to park behind and, and because the town hall isn't active. But it felt like it might be a good idea to have something there that if it became a problem, uh, there's a lever or a hammer. Right. During regular business hours. Yeah. Right. Do, do uh, any other any other businesses in town like do they are there signs that get put up or you just talk to them when they come in just to let them know this is this is kind of how we operate i know i'm not aware of the signage in other parts of town okay uh chris or nate are you aware of anything I don't think there's any signage, but I also wanted to comment that I think that the um, third party services will could use the spaces out back, um, even during normal business hours, as long as they're parking in the spaces. I think what you're trying to avoid is they're blocking the driveway. Um, you want to maintain access along that driveway. So if they're using the spaces back there, I think that's legitimate. Mm -hmm. So no double parking. Right. I mean, aren't these rules that apply to all vehicles in all of Amherst? Like, Thank why you. is it specific to this restaurant that we need to say double parking is? Right. I mean, some of it would be if it becomes, you know, so busy that there's cars queuing up in the alley for deliveries, you know, and it, I, I can I jump in? Uh, Janet, you have your hand up. So I've been thinking about this because I think, um, you know, it, there's not going to be specific parking for delivery, you know, for meal delivery companies anywhere in the town because very tight parking. But I do think um, the the restaurant will have a contractual relationship with the delivery companies, and so we could put some burden on them to prevent double parking or, you know, blocking driveway access um, on the restaurant. And because that becomes a problem, then they can talk to their, their delivery services and say, you can't be double parking on main street. You can't be blocking the, you know, the driveway into the parking spaces and things like that. So I think this is actually not a bad condition. Um, it definitely is a condition that we isn't on other established restaurants, but I think that um, it sounds like this double parking and blocking has become a problem. And so it might just be the beginning, maybe later on there's a, a town bylaw on this, but I think it's not a bad, it's a very tight spot and there's a lot of use of that 
that lean. Okay, thank you. Uh, Nate, that looks good for condition number seven. Andrew, you have your hand up. Thanks, Doug. Um, I'm not going to die in the cell, but um, relative to the fencing, it, you know, um, just curious, Bruce, I was thinking in my head, it was more like a PVC fence for privacy. So nothing to do with safety or structural, just for screening and low maintenance. Uh, I've, I'll, I'll be honest, I've not been to the site uh, recently as part of this. Uh, so I'm just curious, um, you know, maybe other board members, does that seem like something that you'd be agreeable to? Um, and I know that there wasn't any fencing there before, but to the extent that it might improve the aesthetic, then maybe that's, uh, you know, an opportunity for us to gain some goodwill with, uh, with the town. Well, you're reminding me, did, was there any sort of site uh, visit report that anyone wanted to give? Doesn't, uh, Tom? I would like to say that the site visit showed that the entire back of this building is all equipment and it's all problematic and it's all visually unappealing. And that the idea that like we're trying to figure out how to solve this problem seems really problematic because the whole back of the building is all like even the town hall is all just HVAC and equipment that's exposed and there's all kinds of stuff going on there. So I think what we want to do here is try to solve a particular problem. I think we should try to allow this client to solve this problem. The problem isn't them, the problem is a moratorium, and the moratorium is creating a conflict. Therefore, we need to solve that particular problem. I don't think that they have more or less trash than anyone else. I don't think they have more or less garbage or parking than anyone else. I think we just need to allow this function uh, like any other restaurant in the town that doesn't have specifications on who can park where. This is a normal lot that lots of people park in. I think they should be allowed to park there. I think there's three 15 minute spots right out front and they should be allowed to park there and that should be the normal procedure. But when we were back here, all you see is mechanical space. That's exactly what we saw. We were shown that and uh, I think they did a good job of tidying it up, making sure it's safe and putting in the bollards, cleaning up the windows. And so my sense is that the problem was solved from a functional perspective. I don't know if there's an aesthetic way to solve a problem of a mechanical space, which is what this back alley is. Okay, thank you, Tom. Andrew, you were you were trying to break in. Oh, there? He, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, Doug. Yeah. No, um, so, Tom, I was just wondering, like, could you just enclose that concrete pad with the like PVC fence for privacy? So I, I get it on the form, I'm, or the yeah, the functional form, whatever. Uh, I'm just aesthetically, is there an opportunity to make this a little bit less? Um, Right, but then we have to require uh, that there a way to hall, soften it. Right? Like, so why is town hall not required to hide their HVAC and gas equipment? So I guess the question is yeah, like yeah. specific to just this place, <laughs> just this time, and totally, not all totally, the other places totally. in Amherst. Yeah, no, that's a that's a great and very fair point. I'm just wondering if this is an opportunity to make an improvement is all. Like understanding it wouldn't it's not a title effect that would make everything better, but maybe it's an opportunity to improve at least one space. All right. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, Chris, I see your hand and I'm going to let you jump ahead here. I would just say that I think a fence there for screening is going to cause more problems than it will solve because people are going to be hitting it, backing into it, knocking it over, and it's going to be dilapidated the way Bruce has described it. So my recommendation would be not to make that requirement but I'm just offering that recommendation. All right, thanks, Chris. I actually agree. I think we're more likely to have people not backing into propane tanks if they can see that there's a propane tank there. Um, Karen, you have your hand next. I just wanted to say I agree so much with Tom. Um, I think that this restaurant happening there, we should just uh, help them, encourage them. They've done a good job of presenting it. And I think there's nothing, not much more besides the frequent uh, trash pickups and making sure that 
uh, we don't have any sort of uh, restaurant big buildup back there to make things much worse. But I think it's in their interest to have this place be attractive all the way around. And if you see the ambiance that they've created, I think they're going to be concerned about that. So I think we should go ahead and approve it and with the conditions that we have right now. Okay, thank you. Tom? No? Janet? Um, I just want to cheerfully agree with everybody. Um, Andrew, you, I agree about screening, be, you know, because we do usually screen splits. Like you, we see that all over the place. I agree with Tom, this is kind of a really ugly spot and that the bollards will be, are necessary, more necessary than the fencing um, and probably will look as good as fencing. So I, I think and we usually have people covering up their power things, you know, for sound or just look. But I think in this case, the bollards are probably best. There's not a lot of space there. And, you know, you're right. People don't back into bollards and they always knock into fences. So I think it's just a weird small spot. And, you know, this is an awkward fix for a problem that none of us can really fix. Okay. Thanks, Janet. Uh, that's all the hands I see. Um, Andrew, I think there seems to be a prevalence of opinion that we should not go with screening. And uh, I guess I just want to state that before we get any further. Bruce? Um, I don't know whether I'm seconding Karen's motion, well, but basically- well, if you I, want to make a motion, you can- I move that uh, uh, to approve the, uh, the site plan review uh, for the and then state the property with the conditions as proposed one through seven. All right, so there were findings drafted down below. Uh, and if you could uh, scroll up a little bit. And, uh, and with the findings, uh, um, it's, it's just a one-liner, basically. Yeah. It's, it's, and it's, it's, um, do, you, do you also wanna propose that we close the hearing? I do. Uh, that we close the hearing, yes. Okay, Karen? Second it. Okay, thank you. Uh, board members, is there additional discussion you would like to have before we go to a vote? And it looks like my internet bandwidth is getting to be a problem, so you will see me disappear from video on and off probably for the rest of the evening. Um, okay, so um, I'm not seeing any more hands for any more discussion. Uh, Chris and Pam, I think we have a motion to approve the site plan review with the conditions that are drafted here um, and the findings as drafted and close the public hearing. All right, so we'll go through that. Bruce, why don't you start? Hi. And Tom. Hi. Andrew. Hi. Janet. Hi. And Johanna. Hi. Karen. Hi. Naim and I as well. That's unanimous. Seven in favor. Okay, uh, Matthew and Jamie and Scott, thank you very much for coming to our meeting. And that was a very complete presentation. I'd like to thank you for that. Thank you. Thank Good you. Luck. Thank Good you luck very with your restaurant. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so the time now is 7.35. I'm thinking we should probably start the next item on the agenda and then we will break around 8 or 8.15. And then maybe at that point, we may need to continue con talk talking about the next item. All right, so the time now is 7.36 and uh, Item four on the agenda, the zoning bylaw, article three, use regulations, article four, development methods, article nine, non-conforming lots, uses and structures, and article 12, def definitions. Continued from March 1st, 
April 5th, April 19th, May 3rd, and May 17th, all of this year, to see if the town will vote to amend Article 3 use regulations to change the permitting requirements for owner occupied, occupied duplexes, affordable duplexes, non owner occupied duplexes, converted dwellings, and townhouses to create more streamlined permitting pathways for these uses, to remove the use category subdividable dwellings, to add a use category three family detached dwelling or triplex, to add a permitting pathway and standards and conditions for triplexes, to modify standards and conditions for other housing use categories, to amend permitting requirements for housing use categories in the aquifer recharge protection overlay district, to amend article four development methods to add three family dwelling where appropriate, to amend article nine non-conforming lots, uses and structures, to add a reference to three family dwelling, to amend article 12 definitions, to add three family detached dwelling unit or triplex and to delete subdividable dwelling. Are there any board disclosures? I know we've talked about this on this topic several times, so I'm not expecting any. All right. Um, All right. Do we have any? Do we have any presentation from the sponsors this evening? I know Pat was in the audience, um, and I know we saw uh, Chris. I think you sent a further revised um, amendment today, um, and I at least didn't have a chance to go through that before the meeting after I got home tonight. Is there is there any sort of succinct synopsis of what changed today that anyone can offer, Chris? I'm not exactly sure, but I think it had to do with the definition of converted dwelling. Um, that's what I gleaned from Mandy's email, and um, Pat may have more information about that. Okay, all right, then we'll go to Pat. Hello, Pat. Welcome to the meeting. Thank you. Um, we have uh, made changes to the um, 3.3210, the owner occupied duplex, uh, moving from our hope that it would be a yes to special permit. We have um, changed uh, in the 3.3212 affordable duplex uh, in the RO and RLD and the RN. We have moved from yes to special permit. Um, I'm trying to, let me see. And in terms of um, triplex, we have in the um, RN, we have moved, we have made instead of special permit, which we were suggesting, we we're saying no. In terms of 3.322 townhouses or townhomes uh, in the RN, we we're saying uh, instead of special permit, no. Um, let's see, and there are some language changes. Um, so, uh, Pat, I but, guess I need to ask, were you expecting us to absorb this and be able to process it to that tonight? Well, I was hoping you would get it before today. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, and yes, I mean, I feel like uh, yes, I hope you can absorb those changes. They actually reflect changes that you folks wanted and Chris wanted, the planning department wanted. Um, they're not changes. Uh, so they're not changes that are rechanging something you don't want or anything like that. Well, I wasn't able to keep up with you with uh, to write down the sections that you reeled off. Okay. Uh, do you think you could repeat those four numbers slowly? Yeah. Well, I could do it that way, or I could do it verbally in in a different way. I could talk about what we're trying to do. Well, we have the we have the document on the screen. So, Pam, okay. do you think you could close the uh, the the right hand side 
click on that little triangle on the vertical bar. So we can go down, click on that little, whoops. But this? No, go up to the, to the <laughs> center. Click yeah, yeah. on the, the little triangle in the very middle vertically of that same area. Oh, okay. Click on that little triangle right there. The, the triangle, not the, not the scroll bar. I'm not seeing a triangle, Doug. All I see is the scroll bar. So Nate, if you want to jump in here, if you know what okay, he's talking about. I'm just trying to get you to blow it up. So uh, it's awfully small. So can we do this? All right, that's good. All right, Pat, let's go to the first first point of change. Oh, okay, today. so uh, the current revisions that we're talking about are in yellow. So on this page, I didn't bring this up, we're adding permit granting authority here in the design standards for two or three family detached dwellings. Can you see that? So that we're, we're saying we, that was just a Scribner's thing. Uh-huh. This is and the part you, that's highlighted in yellow. Yes, yes. So, so you, if you go to page two, and under 3.3212 and three family detached dwellings, the changes that we're, we're um, going with are instead of um, in the R, whoop, whoop. Let's get to the section. Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the wrong place myself. I'm trying. Okay. In terms of owner occupied duplexes, that's where we are. Thank you. And in that first, in the RO, we had requested and the RLD, we were hoping for a yes. We were, uh, we're saying, well, let's go back to site, uh, special permit. And in the RN, also go back to special permit. That's, that's only in the aquifer recharge district. Yes. Okay. All right. And then if you go down to um, the highlighted area on the uh, third sentence in the RG, RBC, and RN districts, any development with two or but not more than four dwelling units on a single parcel um, shall require site plan review. And any development with four dwelling units on a single parcel shall require a special permit. So that's it. Am I right that that language is, is pretty consistent with what Chris Brestrup had recommended? Yes, it is. Chris, do you agree with that? I do. Okay. Yep. All right, let's go to the next one. Yeah, and the, the next one is 3.3212 affordable duplex. And here we have yeah, thank you. In the RO and the RLD, we've gone back to uh, supporting Chris's uh, special permit and also in the RN going from yes to special permit. In the aquifer recharge district. Right. right. All right, are there any others? Uh, if you go to uh, page four, 3.3213 triplex. Okay, the only change there is to go from special permit in the RN to a no. And in, is that, have people registered that? Okay, and then in 3.322 townhouse in the RN, we're saying instead of special permit, no. Uh huh. And I, let me see. And I think that's pretty much it. All right. Thank you. So the rattling is worse than uh, just doing that this way. That was helpful. Okay. All right. So obviously, board members. Uh, can I can I say one oh, thing? Yeah. Sure. Sure. Okay. Um, because. You know, this has been, and I appreciate this has been going on for a long time. Um, and so tonight, um, we are encouraging you, the planning board, to vote positively on aspects of the proposal you support 
and negatively on those you don't. Um, for example, in regard to converted and subdividable dwellings, a member of the board is saying, don't change a thing. If that's the case, it would be more logical to vote on our proposal than to discuss the changes, which basically amount to a suggestion to vote not to recommend those changes. Um, our approach to housing in Amherst needs to be multifaceted and our proposal is one of these facets. And I think given the work that you've done and that has been done, that you are ready to move this into sections and, and vote approval or disapproval. And that's my hope. Okay, thank you, Pat. Let's see how the conversation goes. Okay, I see so far two hands from Bruce and then Tom. So Bruce, go ahead. Bruce, you are muted. I was hoping to be able to read my motion, but um, let's see if I can do this. Yeah, that's right. Pat, um, uh, I have not been convinced. Um, and what I, what I move is that the planning board recommends to town council that the, pros, that the proposed zoning amendment not be adopted. And Doug, I'd like to speak to that briefly. Okay, uh, Bruce. Do you, do you want to wait for a second or not? Uh, I think probably I should. Yeah, I think that would be good. So Bruce is proposing that we uh, not recommend this to town council. Uh, uh, Tom, is your, are you, is your hand in response to the possibility of a second or not? I was hoping to call for a straw vote to try to get a sense of this before we spend some time discussing it, um, but I'd be happy to second versus. Um, okay. All right. So we have a second, and that will enable us to have a conversation. Bruce, go ahead. Um, I'm, I'm going to read what I wrote because I wanted to be succinct and to be brief, and I may have other things to say as others will. But uh, essentially, in speaking to the motion, I would say that the planning board has spent considerable time during, I think, seven meetings since January considering this rezoning proposal. And whereas the stated goal is laudable, and one I think we all support, it's increasingly evident that the proposed solution that the recommended zoning changes are unlikely to achieve that goal, even with all the changes, adjustments, and refinements that we've made to date and, and even this evening. Like many of us from the beginning, I thought that this proposal was inconsistent with its stated objective. I think I said that at the first meeting. I've said it periodically since. Um, it's also been a statement that's uh, been uh, that's been shared by many public uh, in the public comment uh, period. Uh, but right at the beginning of this, in January or February, I I, I began to seek out other towns like Amherst, I called them, and I eventually, uh, uh, after skimming through a hundred or few more, I got down to fifteen. And not all, but uh, so far, four or five, I've spoken to the planning staffs to find out what their situations were like and what they were doing about it. And they all had similar, a similar version of our problem, but they are all doing and pursuing quite different cures. And last week, and this was the clincher for me, along with actually at least two other members of the planning board and, and, uh, and town officials, I know at least one town councillor, sat in on an illuminating discussion, I felt, hosted by the uh, International Town Gown Association, which was an organization that I discovered in this whole process. But then Paul Bachelman sent the invitation to the webinar. It focused exactly on the matters we are considering and I became even more aware of the variety of solution concepts available and under consideration by other towns like us. Um, Pat and Mandy Joe are to be thanked and applauded for the work they've invested in developing this proposal and triggering this discussion. But it's become abundantly clear to me 
that there are other and better ways of achieving the stated goals. And I therefore think we should vote to end this discussion uh, on this proposal by supporting the motion as presented. And then we can get to a broader and more uh, and ultimately more focused uh, um, uh, uh, address of the solution concepts. This is an important problem, but this is not the way to deal with it. I think that's for me, Doug. Okay, so that's the end of your remarks, Bruce? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, board members, are there other comments you anybody would like to make? Well, we're all talked out about this. Tom. Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to say that I, I, I still commend Mandy, Joe, and Pat for the effort that's put in here, but I, I definitely agree with Bruce in terms of finding the most efficient ways to actually address the problems that are raised. And I think there are other ways to do that that don't require the kind of breadth of changes and the unknown impacts that come from this particular proposal. So, um, so in, in essence, I, I agree with Bruce in, in a lot of ways, but also, you know, as Bruce said, commend them for the effort to put this together. Um, I'd love an opportunity to um, imagine what comes next in terms of trying to achieve these goals. But um, I don't think, from my perspective, I don't think this is gonna do it. Um, so um, I hope we can all be on board with um, this, you know, moving on from this particular proposal. Okay, thanks, Tom. Um, so I've really agonized over this myself. Um, and I've, I know that I have not been a particular supporter of it. But I have worried that I'm letting the perfect be, or the better, be the enemy of the good. Um, in that, you know, if this resulted in two more, 200 more units of housing in town, that would probably be a good thing. Um, I, I, I regret that I haven't had time to look at the latest edits that were made. Uh, as Mandy or as Pat went through them, I did feel that. Uh, some were addressing the, some of the concerns that I had, and so I'm I'm more optimistic that I could accept this than I I was before. Um, I I I also want to point out that if you know, regardless of what we vote, if this is voted um, down by council, that the that it can't come back to council or be proposed again for two years. And so I was looking at the uh, town council rules of procedure and um, it basically, I'm gonna read one sentence from that, which says a zoning bylaw, which is finally rejected by the council, that is, may not be reconsidered within two years unless the planning board makes a recommendation to do so. So it seems to me that there's parts of this that we ought to be pursuing and we ought to be doing it sooner than two years. You know, even just eliminating subdividable dwelling units from the bylaw, we've got the recommendation from staff to do that. Why not allow ourselves and give the council the ability to do that? So rather than just reject this and not recommend it, um, I would rec I would suggest that, or I, maybe I would do a uh, propose a friendly amendment that we simply uh, that we that we say at this time we can't recommend it, but there are parts of it that we think could be pursued and should be pursued uh, sooner than two years. Um, that would give uh, us and the staff the flexibility to come back with specific parts um, that we could enact that might be more limited and would uh, you know, allow us to make an incremental change rather than um, you know, this sort of wholesale change that's been so challenging for all of us to completely understand and to digest. So um, 
Bruce, uh, consider that a, a friendly amendment proposal. Um, and, um, you know, I'm, I, 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 as I said, I've been conflicted and I, to some degree, I, I'd like to vote for this, but I, I just haven't been able to get my head around it. Bruce? Doug, I, I, I support that sort of friendly amendment because I too have things in here that uh, I'm uh, more broadly supportive of. There are some things that I'm fairly confused about. My general sense was that that the uh, that that the things that I might support in here, I don't uh, kid myself that would necessarily support the achievement of uh, of, of uh, affordable and workforce housing. It'll just be more housing. And I think, uh, as has been pointed out, it's fairly clear in this market that the bulk of that housing, at least, uh, would probably be student uh, rental housing. And uh, but we don't really know, and uh, it's just highly likely based on the the market that we're in at the moment. But it does. So yes, there are things here that whether in whether even if they don't, uh, uh, I think, address the goal specifically stated by the proponents. Um, might be good for the town, but I would like to do as you suggest uh, and uh, and, and uh, leave open the opportunity to uh, um, dissect this and bring things forward. But I wouldn't like to try and dissect it and do it now. But your wording was uh, that there. Um, I can't remember. It, it had to do with we re we we at this point we vote not to recommend, but that we recognize that there are um, uh, uh, possibly or probably components of this that would be beneficial to the town and that we might choose to uh, uh, pursue um, sometime in the in the in the future uh, um, earlier than two years sooner than two years if that was what you said I think it's more or less what you said. I think that's the gist of it. Uh, I would accept that as, a, as the second it. sentence on to the motion or a, or a comma after what I said, however you want to uh, phrase it. Mm -hmm. But uh, it might be good to write that out because this motion is probably one that we want to make sure we understand. Right. Um, so maybe what I, if you, if you take, a, when we take a break, I will, uh, I will uh, redraft, uh, or you, if you want to, you can send uh, you can, you can you can write up what you think, and I'll write up what I think you think, and then we can add it, and and then that can become the uh, the the motion. But I'm 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 quite prepared to accept that uh, friendly amendment. Okay. All right. Thanks, Bruce. Chris, um, since uh, you know any parts of this that we bring forward uh, in the future, I would hope you guys on the staff would be involved in. Uh, are you okay with the way we're talking about proceeding? Yes, I am. I agree with the way you're proceeding. All right. All right. And, do, and do, do you, in fact, think that uh, or hope that we, in fact, can look at some of this and bring parts of it forward? You know, I mean, I think the subdividable dwelling is probably the easiest one. Um, but yes, um, I, I agree. I agree that there are parts of this that that can and should be brought forward. I, I'm not prepared to um, list them right now, but I, I do right. agree with that. Yep. Okay, so we'll Doug, I think, I think Doug? okay. Doug? Yes. I'm sorry. I, I don't think your proposal or your friendly amendment is going to help as though, though I see the good intentions in it. Um, because if we could rec we could say we don't vote for, we don't recommend this package but we see some merit that doesn't really get the town council out of voting on the amendment so if they vote the amendments down then we have the two years if we vote not to recommend this package just cuz of the complexity and you know a myriad of reasons i think a prudent next step would be for the proponents to withdraw it and that would leave everything on the table to be picked up later so, I mean, if I was a town councilor, I'd be like, oh, the planning board didn't recommend this package, but some people like some parts, some people like others. How are they going to vote? Because they're not going to have, you know, direction. And, you know, when you say subdividable dwellings, you know, I'm sitting here thinking, well, those are triplexes. And under this proposal, if we got rid of triplexes that we allow in the RN, 
but the proposal is not allowing triplexes in the RN. And so I feel like there's so much confusion and complexity in our bylaw to begin with, and then this is just adding to it. But I think it, I think your idea, I see what you're trying to say, but I think the town council is still going to go up or down, and we're not really giving them guidance to say, well, Doug liked to wanted to get rid of this, but Janet wanted to, I want to simplify multifamily right. housing. Well, I, guess, I guess what I was hoping was that we could word it in such a way that we uh, we met this uh, wording of the of the town council rules of procedures that we were, you know, recommending that parts be reconsidered in sooner than two years. Um, yeah, I think it'd just be easier if they withdrew it and then, you know, the planning department and we put our heads together and say, hey, what did we like? Or I have some suggestions just to say, let's just treat multi-unit housing consistently with design standards and protections and, you know, one permitting route. So there's not three possible routes. Like I want to see simplicity and, you know, logic. And that's my problem with this proposal. It's, and it's my problem with the bylaw. So okay. I wouldn't mind working on this, but I, I think um, we're not really going to give the, if the town council votes it down, then you have the two year thing. Yeah, and then I guess right. they can, yeah. You're right. They've, they've got the final word and, um, but it looked like, at least the way I was reading those rules, that if we that we had a role, let's say, in in uh, in helping Revival. them, <laughs> in, in, in uh, helping giving them the option and all of us the option to do something sooner than two years. Okay. Um, and and so I, I guess your suggestion about withdrawal, I need to ask Pat. Um, Pat, uh, given the way the conversation is going, um, I'm not. I'm not going to say yes or no without talking okay. to Mandy. That would okay. yeah, that would not be appropriate. Okay, thank you, uh, Chris. I see your hand. Bruce is. I uh, will come to you next. Yeah, I. I guess I kind of agree with Janet. I don't necessarily think you have to make that second statement. Um, that um, the planning board, you know, thinks that there is merit in some of these items and that we could bring them back before the two year limit um, because I think that's implicit in the regulations. The regulations allow things to come back if the planning board uh, brings them forward. But the, there's also um, another thing, which is that as long as you're not bringing back the same exact uh, proposal, if you bring back a part of the proposal, um, then you know anyone can bring that back. So okay. it's only when you're bringing back something that's, you know, pretty much exactly the same as what has been proposed previously, that there's a, um, a prohibition on having that come back before two years. But if you wanted to bring parts of this back, I think it, anyone could do that. So okay. I, I don't really think you have to have that second part of the um, the motion. In my okay, opinion. so that would uh, obviate the need for my friendly amendment. And uh, Bruce, your original proposal which was seconded could stand as it was yes okay Doug. i i was just going to say that my understanding was that that, that it, it, the proposal was that we would be recommending clearly to the to the council not to we're not recommending adoption and then uh, well i understood your statement to be was to give them some support in the notion that uh, the board sees some merit that would uh, because i think you said that it can't be brought back within two years, unless the planning board. Uh, uh, That's uh, what it says. Yeah, yeah. So, so what I understood your friendly yeah. amendment be the saying uh, to Janet and, and Chris is that the board uh, feels uh, favorably, potentially favorably at some fractions of this and, uh, um, and, we, uh, and we might be inclined to bring that back earlier than two years. And, and uh, th that's actually giving the, the council some uh, support really in being able to uh, uh, um, follow our recommendation but that support can be given by uh, the planning director in a statement to the council and probably that's the best way to do it and so i think perhaps we should uh, not uh, put the friendly amendment in uh, based on what chris just said so okay. yeah I'm, I'm good with the original motion. <laughs> okay and, um, doug, and, andrew I'm, has, I'm sorry janet um doug andrew has his hand up in in the attendee section Oh, thank you for noticing that. Thanks. 
Thanks, Janet. Um, I lost track of what the what the friendly amendment was, but I will just say that uh, I mean I, I I really want to say that we got a lot of feedback uh, from uh, town residents, and you know I, I'm thinking of a specific attachment which listed probably 30 or 40 um, people who indicated that you know you should vote no. I'm sorry about the noise here. That you should vote no on this, right? But what we didn't have was anybody saying, providing a better idea. And so like just echoing what people had said about just kudos to Mandy, Joe and Pat for actually like doing something about it. I don't feel comfortable just saying we should let this go. I, I feel like the only thing that, I, I feel like we should require or we should, <laughs> All right, let me let me rephrase. I would say that I'm supportive of Janet's prospect or, or her uh, proposal of let's ask them to rescind this. It's way too important, and I feel like it's very easy to gloss over um, what we should do with someone who's actually proposing actions. And I, again, I just I and I apologize for the noise. I cannot overstate how impressed I am by two people who are actually proposing something instead of just complaining about stuff. Um, it's, it's just so incredibly frustrating to me that we've got people who are, who are willing to shut down a proposal without providing an, an alternate. Um, I think that there's a lot of very relevant and useful points in this that we should be talking about. I would, I would echo Janice's proposal that they rescind only in that it makes it easier for us to bring it back later without somebody suggesting that we're rehashing a, something that was already shut down. But we need to do something about this. We need to actually make it, mean, we need to like have some actual actions that come out of this. It's not enough in my mind to say, this isn't good enough and we'll figure something out down the road because no one else is bringing any other ideas. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Andrew. Um... I will, I will remind the board that at times we have talked about increasing the zoning down along Belchertown Road. And um, you know, no, uh, no one had followed up on that to, to bring a proposal for that, although I have done some work on it myself and, and may bring something to the board. Um, so, uh, I, I think it's it, my sense is that the, most of us felt like this would be relatively ineffective, and and that we thought something, some other approach could be more effective, and that does get toward is the perfect being the enemy of the good here, in a way that I I've I've wrestled with, um, Johanna. Thank you. I'm really appreciating the conversation tonight and also really want to thank Pat and Mandy for just putting something out there. Um, I think I've kind of said from the beginning that to me, this seems like a, it's not a panacea to our housing problems, but it does, it's a comprehensive nudge that's townwide that would make it easier to add housing, duplexes, triplexes, um, and yeah, we think it would add a couple hundred units that doesn't, you know, that doesn't solve things, but I do think it is, you know, it's a step in the right direction. And I, it does seem like a lot of the recommendations of staff and the concerns around protecting our drinking water supply, like those changes have been made in this. And so, um, I'm interested in hearing where where what are the sticking points now and what are the elements of this that this board could approve and i guess i'm interested in pursuing let you know are there things like that right now that we could recommend yes to and work with pat and mandy joe you know on continuing to adapt the proposal to the place where it gets us to a yes and sending it to town council. 
Um, so I guess it's going back to Tom's straw poll idea of like, let's talk through the different elements. And if, you know, if there's enough support for a certain provision, let's, let's do it. You know, change doesn't happen all at once. It's incremental and there's going to be a lot more work to do, you know, even if we say yes to some of the steps in this. Um, so, you know, I, I think there are a lot of different ways we could go, but I, I'm, I'm interested in figuring out what can we say yes to, what can this board, you know, where can we get four votes now at a minimum to move something forward? Okay, thanks, Johanna. Bruce? Um, I think I want to speak to Andrew's uh, um, concerns that uh, somebody has proposed something uh, uh, we should uh, acknowledge the effort. And I think we are acknowledging the effort. I certainly am because um, what this has caused me to do, uh, and I perhaps I'm a little remiss because I haven't really been feeling uh, keeping the board apprised of all what I've been doing since this thing first hit the table four months ago. I've got a quite a project going, and uh, and so that's thanks to this um, initiative. And I think there are better ways, as I said, of handling this. And so I would rather than, as uh, uh, Johanna says, pick through this and look at the things that we thought think think well of enough to say yes to. I would rather um, start back at the goals, and. Uh, and say, how can we achieve those goals? Uh, because it's become, as I said in my initial piece, abundantly clear to me that there are lots of other ways of doing it and that they are more likely to be successful. And I think that anything that we do, so far as this, the, the letter of this proposal is concerned, should be done in a greater context, which is why I was supportive of the friendly amendment, but which now we realize we don't need to be because we have the power to do that. I think this has raised uh, a, a larger and, and, and more important uh, uh, way to frame the conversation. And I really want to encourage us all to decide to take that lead. We've met a couple of times in town hall and, and I think we've enjoyed and found that productive and we would meet more. Uh, this is, uh, I think, at Doug's uh, initiative. Uh, again, I would say that's an initiative that has stemmed from uh, this proposal to look because one of the ways in which uh, towns have been solving this uh, is by building uh, various types of multifamily housing in uh, particular locations. And whether it's on campus or at the edge of campus or off, whether it's uh, renovation and aggregation of existing uh, buildings or whether it's building new, whether it's a private partnership or a private to public partnerships uh, or whether it's uh, um, private uh, uh, par uh, initial, uh, developers on leased public uh, university lands or various, there are, uh, I, I'm going to stumble if I start trying to list all of the ways in which I've uh, become aware that this problem, this, this, the, the, the housing is being provided. And of course, the more we provide student housing, the, the freer uh, housing in town can become and it's not to say that all uh, housing can be done on or uh, at the edge of campus but more of it can be i think so i would like us to recognize uh, andrew that this is not a vote to dump something um uh, because it's uh, uh and, and disrespectfully it's not at all because a lot of uh, effort is is uh, come particularly, I think, certainly I can speak to myself on this because I know I put many, many hours into trying to understand this problem and how other people are handling it. And I know that Doug's has got his whole uh, way of thinking about this as well because we've witnessed that. And I suspect that others of us have been wrestling in our own ways. And so I don't think uh, a, a vote to support this motion is a disrespectful vote. I think it recognizes that we've been kicked into uh, action here. And I think I'd like to think that we were being kicked into a higher gear. Because as I said, I think the, 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 the impetus of this, the goals and so forth are very laudable, but I think we can do better in terms of the solution concepts. And I do think also that um, Mandy, Joe and Pat have proposed this themselves and they brought it forward themselves. 
but really it's not the best way to do it. Uh, we've got planning staff and I think uh, it's better that we frame the goal statements, objectives, design requirements and so forth, and then um, allow our planning staff to bring forward uh, proposals uh, as opposed to reacting to and refining uh, proposals progressively through a series of seven and now eight meetings. That's not a good way of doing business. It's confusing, as we all know, and it's especially confusing for the public because we've heard that. So I think we can do a, I think we can run a better process, and I think there are more abundant and, and better solution concepts. Um, but we have been, uh, um, this has been initiated by two folks who took it upon themselves to uh, uh, do something. And don't forget that we've spent uh, you know, almost the last six months on and off looking at this. So this has certainly been dignified by, by this board's uh, attention and efforts along with the planning staff. So I don't think um, supporting the motion is disrespectful or is in some way um, uh, 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 being uh, 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 yielding to uh, um, apathy or so forth. I think it's part of a good process. Uh, and I certainly want to be able to bring, to begin to think about some of the things that I've learned in the last four months uh, because I've been reacting to and trying to understand what this all means. So I do support, I do recommend supporting the motion. Okay, thank you, Bruce. Okay, I see Janet and I see Andrew's hands and then I think we'll take a break after the two of them speak. Thank Janet. you. So I, I, you know, this this proposal has bedeviled me and it's so complicated and, you know, you know, I have a, like almost like three inches in my file on changes and comment. I keep on writing the same comment over and over to myself, but, but I think that what this has done, it's, I think it's launched really for me, hopefully two efforts, because I've always wanted to work on the college student housing question in Amherst. And I think Bruce's work is really reaching out to other communities. And, you know, when I listened to the seminar, I realized like we have all this extra density in our zoning. We, you know, we're way ahead of a lot of the college towns, but it really hasn't worked. And it's not just because somebody has to get a special permit. There's other re other things at, at work there. Um, I, you know, so I think that Bruce's look and, you know, where can we put more people, village centers, maybe a student housing area, maybe, a, you know, you know, a, a different mixed housing area, but we need to make space in our community for non-students. And, and so I'm, we'd be, I'm really excited in Bruce's, you know, work, but I also think, you know, maybe in a, um, something that may just excite planners is I would like to work on how we add density to our neighborhoods and maintain some design controls and reduce negative impacts. And so I feel like it was decades ago, but it was really just four years ago, the zoning subcommittee under Maria Chat, we started looking at the missing middle and with pictures, you know, like how do we make this kind of multifamily housing attractive and looks like it fits in and the impacts, you know, aren't, you know, really overwhelming to sort of single family or in my neighborhood, there's single family and, you know, multifamily um, to control the impacts. And one of the impacts is the impacts of student housing on a neighborhood. And we have to acknowledge that two, you know, duplexes or a quad, a fourplex in a, in a residential neighborhood that's filled with 16 students is going to have a really di different impact than maybe one unit has four students and the rest have a, a mix. And so, I just think that we we do need to look at our zoning and how inconsistent it is, but we have to consider design. We have to consider impacts and make sure the results are the ones that we want. And when we're listening to that seminar, people, you know, everybody was talking about neighborhoods that just flipped over to student rentals. And there's a lot of conflict, a lot of people leaving that. We don't want that town. And so I think let's do let's do let's do this hard work because it could have really fruitful results. Um, so I, you know, you know, Pat, I don't love your proposal, but I love the energy and the, I, I understand how hard this is to work on, but I think you're pushing us to deal with really difficult issues. And I'm really committed to working on them in the nitty gritty, crazy zoning bylaw that we have. All right, thanks, Janet. Andrew. 
Thanks, Doug. Um, uh, Bruce, uh, actually, we agree on almost all of this. Um, I think the only way that this would be disrespectful is if we didn't actually do something about it. Right? It's one thing to say that uh, this isn't a perfect fit and we can do better, but we need to figure out how to do better. And, you know, I, I actually, I think that the idea that the process is, is working is actually not correct because our process relies on Pat and Mandy Joe to come up with an idea. And it's not because we all don't want to have the best things. We're resource constrained, right? I mean, we're, we're all trying to manage our daily lives and still come up with good ideas and make them, them, you know, enact them is, you know, we need to, we need to find a way where we can get together and, um, you know, really think through and have some very meaningful conversations. I was, I loved the, the Sorry, I, I love the, the, the times that we did get to meet in person. I'm going to put myself on mute for a second. Sorry. Sounds like he's in a train station, huh? Yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm literally transferring right now. So, uh, if he, if just give me 10 more seconds, please. <laughs> You're a brave man, Andrew. I wouldn't be anywhere near as brave as you are sitting at the train station trying to make an argument that's actually compelling. Uh, so I'm going to wait and hear you out. Want that connection? Probably, be probably be reason why my argument is not being very compelling, Bruce. This but um, yeah, I. Uh, On the contrary. Again, I, 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 I just, I would just challenge us to actually. Um, Put pen to paper, and uh, you know we're we're through a lot of the COVID stuff. I know that we're, I know it's very convenient to meet remote, but I will say that when we did meet in person, and in my three years on the board, I think it's maybe two or three times we met in person. Those were the most effective meetings that we had. This calls for, um, you know, planning board, planning department and residents to roll up our sleeves and actually have some very candid and real conversations about solutions. And I feel like um, any, uh, any statement that we would make should have some qualifier that would indicate that um, we, will con you know, we will reconvene or we will continue this conversation at some sort of date specific. I, I, I don't feel like it's enough to say these are great ideas and let's process them. We need to hold ourselves accountable. And I don't feel like we're doing that right now. And so uh, anything we can do to, to um, again, in, introduce that accountability, force the conversation. I mean, in, in kind of Robert's rules parlance, what I love is Mandy, Joe, and Pat, they call the question. You know, everybody talks about this stuff, but nobody does anything. And they have. And if we don't come back together, then I do feel like we are doing them and our citizenry a disservice. So I would, I would just challenge us to, to consider that. Thanks. Thanks, Andrew. All right, I'm going to go back on what I said before. Chris, I see your hand. Why don't you give us one more comment before we break? I wanted to just say that um, we're going to be preparing a planning board report to town council about all of this discussion that you've had over the last five months and certainly, you know, including the motion, but there's going to be a lot more than the motion. We will try to describe this conversation that we've had tonight. So I believe that the town council will definitely get the, um, the uh message that you are interested in pursuing parts of this or maybe even all of it but just in a different way so that that message will not be lost as a result of the um of the motion being limited that's all okay thanks chris okay so at the moment it's 8 26 by my clock let's take a five minute break and come back at 8 31 uh, mute and turn off your camera. And when you return, please on, turn on your camera. Thanks.
All right, it looks like we're trickling back. Like we, oh, good. There's Karen. So we have Chris, we have Pam. We're still missing Nate. Andrew, are you there? I am here. If you can hear me, Doug. Okay, great. All right. So, uh, is there more discussion that people would like to have about this motion to not recommend the proposal from Pat and Mandy Joe? Hey, Doug, it's Andrew. Uh, yes, Andrew. You recognize me. I can't figure out how to raise my hand. Okay. But um, yeah, I, I just feel like uh, we do need some sort of date certain or some some actual next step uh, before I would be willing to uh, accept this. I, I'm not comfortable just saying no, and we'll figure it out later. So okay. I realize I'm in a different position since I'm coming off the board. I don't want to commit the board to um, to future actions, but I think this is important enough. And I would I would suggest that we have some language in there that would say by a certain date that we will get together or either, uh, you know, in, in my opinion, and, uh, you know, it's a, an in-person type of charrette type of uh, arrangement for the, you know, regardless of the format, I would say that we need some sort of date certain where we would uh, continue the conversation. Okay. Well, it certainly is a complication that you, you and uh, Tom are coming off the board uh, and possibly uh, sounds like Johanna. And so I, you know, we may have at least two new members uh, for our next meeting. And so it, it will take them a while to get up to speed with something like this, not to mention just uh, generally, I know at least one of them is uh, new to the planning board. Um, so personally, I'm a little bit reluctant to commit to a timeline at this, at this moment. Um, uh, but uh, I see a couple of hands. Bruce? Um, I have to say that I, I, I think this would be very good if this was a unanimous vote in, in whatever form. I, I guess I just like unanimous votes because they're very clear. Uh, to whomever we're making a recommendation. So I personally, as the, as the proponent of the motion, uh, would like to think about how I could, uh, how we could um, amend or construct the motion to get, uh, to get Andrew's vote. But I feel the same as you do, Doug, that uh, I don't quite know how you would put language in that that wouldn't make it seem queer. Uh, so Andrew, I could, uh, I could try to get your vote by, by, by making a personal commitment to continuing what I'm doing. And uh, Doug, I think, has already made it clear that his uh, intention is to uh, convene more of the the uh, the charrette uh, conversations that he's been uh, uh, that he's already convened two of. So, 
I would hope that 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 would be enough. I think the will is there. I don't know how we could uh, put it in words in a way that would, uh, and I think it would be a, it would be kind of an awkward uh, and rather kind of planning board personal thing to put it into a motion that is uh, going to be uh, put before the the the. The, the the town council which is really all they're looking for is uh, what do we think and uh and, and the part of the, the 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 part of actually the part of what do we think is as as chris has already said is going to be enumerated by the planning board report so my sense is if we could have the clear vote uh and uh and 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 the commitment that we will move on uh that's a, a personal uh thing because i've got well i've got another two years and and i I've, I've got room to make myself available for reappointment so i'm here for quite a while potentially and uh i found something that has got my attention so i i didn't uh i think you've i think i think you've got my word <laughs> that this is uh, something that's going to continue. Um, but I don't know how to put it, unless you can craft a, a, a sentence. Uh, I don't know how to craft a sentence that would work to do what, you've, what you're asking, other than the, to just to have this public declaration by at least this member of the board that uh, I'm, uh, I'm committed to doing what you're saying. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, I see three more hands. Karen. I think that you could rephrase it and say that the proposal that Mandy Jo uh, and Pat have put forth has stimulated the board uh, to work hard in um, addressing the housing needs by uh, examining specific parts of that uh this which which is exactly what we're doing and bruce's proposal is that we continue work that you pat and mandy joe have started for us um by reaching out and finding out what is being done across the country in places that are similar just to, to give us a little bit more of a broader sense of uh, possible solutions that could be uh, addressing the need that we all see. So I think we're not really rejecting what you're doing. I think we're putting a pause on, on spending so much time for all of us in looking at, you know, these, these minute little, um, changes in in a broad thing which is very time consuming it is important and at the end has to be done but maybe that's not what we start maybe we go now to the broader thing how can we communicate with the universities how can we listen i also was on that um conference when we learned from the other university towns how they were addressing it how boulder was was addressing the student uh housing needs how other universities were doing it so it's just a broader context that uh, needs to be needs to be our focus now. And I think we're really lucky to have Bruce, who is so capable and who's so dedicated and is putting so much time into that. And that's going to uh, maybe be what we focus on now. And then the proposal that you have um, can fit into that. So I think Andrew, we're not rejecting it at all. I think we're just saying we're going to pause from this detailed analysis and spending so much of our time, which we have, uh, trying to understand it and seeing what the constituents say about this. We're going to pause with that, go to these more. Uh, you muted yourself, Karen. Sorry. OK, but I think you got what I said. Thanks. Yes, thank you. Chris? I was just going to say, I think if you're going to consider, you know, what we've been talking about recently, that you might want to take two votes and maybe you take the second vote first um, to, you know, ameliorate uh, Andrew's 
issues, but you may want to frame a motion that you support an effort to um, keep working on the topic of, you know, however you want to describe this, um, and then take a separate vote on what you want, what you want to communicate to town council about whether they should uh, adopt this or not. S so you would sort of um, solve Andrew's issue by putting in place a framework for moving forward with something. And then you would make the motion about what you want to do with the current proposal. That's my suggestion. Okay. Um, I don't see any other hands at the moment. Andrews is raised, oh, Mr. Okay. Marshall. Thank you. Thank you. Andrew, go ahead. <clears throat> Thank you, make me go for Chris, man. I, I, I always agree with what Chris says. I, uh, and I do agree with what you said, Chris. I just, I, I uh, would just challenge us to actually put gates out there to get together. It's not about we need to have a solution by a certain time, but we are going to commit to uh, carving out time to have conversations about this specific topic at, uh, you know, some specific planning board meetings. And I know we have people coming on board, Doug, um, but uh, I hope, you know, it's a three year term. And uh, I know that uh, certainly I can, yeah, I don't speak on behalf of uh, Tom or uh, Johanna, but um, there's a lot of onboarding time. Throw us the beans in the fire. Like, let's get stuff done. Um, so, uh, anyhow. Um, agree with um, with what Chris had proposed from a, uh, a motion perspective and just kind of getting this uh, kind of rammed through the, the various legalese of what we need to do here but um, you know we need to we need to have a date on it we need to we need to actually commit to doing something by a certain date uh, conversation is fine there's not to be solutions we need to commit to actually talking about this in the future and then for all, you know, yeah, again, I don't know, 30, 40 people, you know, we had the PDF file that listed 30, 40 people who said this thing you need to reject because this thing sucks, uh, part of my language, but like, give us some better ideas, people. You know, we'd love to hear them. We're all trying to solve the same problem. So like, let's, let's figure this out together. So I have to say, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. Janet. So um, as people were talking, I, I was taking notes and I was thinking that we have like the East Amherst Village Center kind of planning. Bruce is doing college town issues. <clears throat> I'm interested in kind of the missing mil middle and making the zoning bylaw like more uniform and clear um, and also protecting neighborhoods from um, impacts. And I kept on thinking of the phrase like density discussions, like maybe that would be something we have, you know, not every every meeting, but just setting aside separate meetings an occasional one meeting out of the month or, you know, a third meeting to really focus on where should density go and how should it go. And so, you know, one idea I had was, you know, let's increase the density at existing apart apartment complexes. It's already developed. You know, we know what parking lots are full, we know, you know, what amenities are needed. Um, people are living there, maybe, you know, we can do that kind of density. Um, we, we're all interested in more density in the village centers, and we all want it to look good. And so I think, you know, we could do density discussions and, and not add an item, but we haven't even, you know, like Bruce is just starting a conversation that, you know, is really has been really badly needed. And it's, he's got, you know, lots of solutions on the table. I think of the, I don't know how many hundred people signed that petition. If we went back to them and said, what are your ideas? I'm sure we'd be flooded. And that could be a day of density discussion with public input and ideas. All right. Thank you, Janet. Bruce? Um, I'm trying to uh, 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 respond to Andrew's challenge here. And I don't know how well this is, but Andrew, the, 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 or, or Chris's challenge, really, Andrew's uh, challenge as well. Um, but the, a, 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 a proposed uh, initial motion uh, could be that the board commits to pursuing, pursuing 
study of issues around housing for low moderate income residents and students with a view to identifying five clear and feasible planning solution concepts uh, uh, to improve these housing options uh, before the end of 2023. And that's pretty specific and it's got a time on it. Um, I don't, it might be too specific, it might be, uh, but it's not a commitment to, to achieving it because that would be stupid, but it is a commitment to pursuing the study of, with a view to identifying five things before the end of the year. Um, would, it, would it be more concrete to have some number of actual bylaw revision proposals? I mean, you know. Uh, we so could change we solution all... concepts to bylaw uh, revision yeah, proposals. Web, uh, five sounds awfully ambitious based on my experience a couple of years ago where we talked about a bunch of things. Chris, I see your hand. You've definitely got something to say. I think that committing to five bylaw um, amendments is probably not the way to go because bylaws are intertwined. And, you know, so you change one thing, but you may want to change something else to, you know, go along with the first thing. And so, you know, they could multiply exponentially or they could all be part of a whole and then you'd only have one. So I, I wouldn't say to um, commit to five bylaw amendments, I think that the five concepts probably makes more sense, in my opinion. Okay. That's what I thought, because we can define that. And I know, uh, and Andrew, uh, to, to be frank, we are, this does, uh, the motion such as this does uh, uh, obviously include wiggle room. But I think uh, it would be disingenuous of us not to and it's probably imprudent as well, as Chris has pointed out. So again, the, the proposed uh, motion is that the board commits to pursuing the study of issues surrounding housing for low, moderate income and student housing with a view to identifying five clear and feasible planning solution concepts before the end of 2023. All right. Chris, from a parliamentary point of view, can we have two motions at once. <laughs> Start talking about a second motion and before we're done with the first one. Uh, Chris, you are muted. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not a parliamentarian. Yeah. Um, so I, I, you could um, perhaps Bruce could withdraw his first motion you could work on the second motion and then go back to the first motion again or something like that. All right. I don't know. Uh, but, but before we do that, I guess, um, how does how do other board members feel about this second motion? Are you willing to go there uh, or are you feeling objection, you know, that you object to this conversation? Could we just say the motion again? I've kind of gotten a little lost. And then also we we should make a little time for public comment maybe. It might be helpful. <laughs> well, uh, can I, Doug? Shall I do what I? Yeah. Repeat the repeat your motion, Bruce. So thank you. The board commits to pursuing study of issues around housing for low and moderate income residents and students, with a view to identifying five clear and feasible planning solution concepts be uh, uh, directed at improving these housing options before the end of, and maybe options would be products or something like that. I think they're just concepts, Bruce. They're yeah. not no, the, the, the solution concepts to, to improving housing before the end of 2023. All right, so there it is, Janet. I think that's fine. I, I hate the idea of drafting five zoning amendments because that just no, we're we're not. No, we're not talking about that. That that's puts me into a panic, and so. Yeah. But solution. I think okay. I think the solution. So focus, the yeah, I'm there. Okay. Good. Can I, can I jump in, I'm, Andrew? Yeah, I'm sorry, Doug. I, I I'm just not sure if you can see me or not. I would not commit to. Uh, I would not commit to a number. I would not commit to solutions. 
I would frankly just say, let's commit to meet, you know, on a monthly, let's agree to have this be part of our agenda on a monthly basis. And to the extent that we can, you know, within, uh, you know, state regulations do this in person, I would encourage us to do that in person. I mean, in, in my perfect world, we w- I would say that we would have, you know, we would have time dedicated to our, um, to our agenda to meet in person monthly to discuss issues around housing inequality and how what we can do to remediate that. But we can't commit to solutions. That's that is a very uh, I would definitely not recommend that because who knows what will come up what will come of this. We can agree to talk about it, and that's the thing that I think has been missing from this is. We say we can talk about it, but we don't actually talk about it until Pat, Mandy, Joe do and force us to talk about it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Bruce, are you? Yes. Oh, Bruce, you're muted. Bruce, you muted yourself. Myself. You were, you were already yeah. unmuted. Yes. Uh, the board commits to pursuing the study of issues around housing for low and moderate income residents and students. Um, uh, uh, commits to by meeting in person uh, at least once a month through 2023. So, Chris, um, you know, anytime we meet, we have we have minutes. We have open meeting requirements. Um, I know that your, you and your, and Pam's time has been a part of the constraints that we've operated under. And, uh, how do you feel if we tried to meet once a month, I assume, you know, either in a regular meeting or a, an additional meeting, because when we've met in person, it's been an additional meeting. Yeah, I think it is. Um, it would have to be an additional meeting um, because you do have things that come up that you have to have on your agenda. But you could commit to rather than meeting once a month, meeting three times or four times between now and the end of the year to discuss this topic. There are six months left, right? July, yeah, August, September, yeah. October. I mean, three August. sounds reasonable yeah. to me. Four sounds already a little bit more. But... So three three meetings between now and the end of the year, and then we can figure out you know, which times do we have less of a burden of um, application review and, or, you know, which month has five Wednesdays and lends itself to an additional meeting. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm good with all of that. Uh, so three times? Three, three times. times before the end of the year. Yes, uh, I and, and the in-person thing. I agree with Andrew and and, and Tom. I think uh, certainly the in-person part of it. I think is important. Right. In person, three times. That's fine with me. Um, Karen, Johanna, Tom, you guys okay with where we're headed here? We want a second. Well, we, you haven't withdrawn your initial motion yet. Oh, right, you're right. Yes. We're, we're still deciding whether to ask you to do that. Okay, thank you. Johanna. I'm okay with where we're headed. Um, I'm a little bit worried that it'll just lead to three meetings where the whole laundry list of issues gets put up and we talk about, you know, all right, you know, Great. East Amherst Village Center. Yeah, let's do let's fix the zoning there. And oh, downtown, let's add density between downtown and the university. And, you know, let's and and that unless going into those meetings, there actually are some concrete proposals that we can discuss and deliberate, I worry that it will just lead to a lot of sound and fury signifying nothing. Right. Johanna, you don't know me. Okay, well, Bruce. Okay, Karen. 
So the one issue that has always muddied all the waters of every zoning change we want to do is that the pressure of the students um, makes it impossible for us to address uh, uh, the affordable, you know, having more housing. And it, we, we always come up, and this is what the people that write to us say too, with the problem that investors will snap up these houses and put in students in. So this, I mean, we have to acknowledge that this is something that we really have to work on together with the university to see how can we address the very real need that the university has for housing. Um, and we want the university, we need it, we want it to succeed. How can we address these needs and still come up with zoning, which is going to make it possible for uh, other low income, not just low income, middle income, everybody, faculty who need to work at the university staff um, to be able to live here. So that's an issue that that is really foremost on my mind right now that we have to address. And once we have a few solutions or know in which direction we can go there, then all these zoning changes will be easier to get completely behind. Okay. So maybe at the first meeting, you can show up with some ideas for how we could solve the student housing problem on, with through town zoning. And, um, and then in the second meeting, we can solve the, the, re the full-time resident problem. But we need to show up with some, some proposals, some actual, this is where I think we can put thousands of beds of student housing on town, town land, not state land. Okay. Um, it sounds like, it looks like most of us have been able to comment about this. So Bruce, uh, hey, hey, hey. oh, Doug, I'm Andrew, sorry. I, I just yeah, don't no, go I, over there all the way to the right. <laughs> uh, no, I totally get it. Um, hey, I, I was just wondering uh, just for, uh, giving us a little bit more flexibility if, if maybe the motion is more that we agree to devote an agenda item once a month to this, right? And ideally we can in person, that's for the, the pre board if they can make that happen, but we agree to dedicate an agenda item to this once a month. Seems like a pretty easy solution and keeps it top of mind and gives us some flexibility to do in person if we can, or if not, at least we're talking about it. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, it's easy to put on the agenda and, you know, we don't have to talk about it for very long. So that feels to me like backsliding from where we were. I, I think we've got more momentum towards actually committing to meet in person and focus on the housing problem in each, each of those three meetings. Um, to me, that's a higher bar. Um, well, I'm sorry to, if I can, if you yeah. recognize me. Um, uh, thank you. Is that uh, I think it, I think I think my proposal can coexist with that proposal, in that we can you know we can say well we're going to meet in person this, this month, but if we can't due to some circumstances unforeseen, we're at least talking about it. But I would definitely suggest that we strive to make those meetings happen. Thank you. Okay, I missed the last four words. Oh, I'm sorry, just that we should strive to have those meetings in person. Yes, yes. But if we can't, we, we can't, right? I mean, let's, I just want to be, uh, you know, recognize the commitment and burden on the town staff and the planning department to make this happen. Right. But let's, let's at least talk about, about it. Moment. Right, well, it did sound like Chris was really willing to to make this happen sometime between now and the end of the year. All right, uh, Bruce, I think it's time for you to withdraw your motion, if you would, so. There we go. And, and, uh, yes, I propose to, uh, I will, I, I agree to withdraw the motion. All right. Um, 
Can I continue to recognize you to make a new motion? Yes, uh, but I agree with you that the bar is higher when we meet in person. And uh, so I'll keep it the way it was. Uh, the board commits to pursuing the study of issues around housing and the low and moderate income residents and students. Um, uh, 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 by meeting in person uh, uh, three times, uh, well, let's say at least three times through uh, 2023. All right. That doesn't mean you can't put it on the agenda because, for example, uh, I think later tonight, well, it won't be tonight, but maybe next time, I was going to give a report on what right. I've been doing. So that would, that, so I think this, the, the, what Andrew was happening will probably happen as well. Okay. Uh, but this is the motion that I hope he will support. I uh, will get his support. Um, I guess I will second your motion. I still see Andrew's hand up. Uh, Andrew, do you want to comment? Um, no, I, I would support that. I'm sorry. It's just on my phone now, and I'm not sure how to lower that. Okay. Um, uh, that sounds great. There, good. It, it came down. Um, does anybody want to discuss this motion? All right, well, we'll go, we'll go to a roll call. Uh, commitment of the board. Oh, Karen, you're muted. I'm sorry. Could you make the motion one more time for me, please, before I vote on it? Bruce? Why don't we ask uh, Pam to read it? Uh, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> All right. I have a piece together here. Let's see. Um, so the board, the proposal is, is for the board commits to pursuing the study of issues for low and moderate and income and student housing directed to improve housing before the end of 2023 by meeting in person at least three times before the end of 2023. So that was not very good, but that's what I have written down. That covered the gist of it. I think so, yeah. Yep. I will. Uh, I'll commit to sending you the motion that that I uh, said in the in an email following the meeting. Thank okay. you, Bruce. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Are you now clear? All right. And uh, should I put your hand down? All right. Okay. Um, we'll go through a roll call. Start with you, Bruce. Aye. Tom. I'm going to abstain. Okay. Andrew? Same, I'll also abstain. All right, Janet? Aye. Johanna? I'm an aye. Karen? Aye. And I'm an aye as well. So that's five in favor, two abstentions, the motion carries. And uh, now Bruce, you wanted to bring up another motion? Uh, since I don't have it written out in front of me now because I've lost my screen, uh, but I, I know that uh, Pam has that. So I, Pam, I'd like to reinstate the original motion. I could probably find it. The original one that you said way back at the beginning? Yes. The planning board recommends to town council that the proposed zoning amendment not be adopted. That's what I have written down. Yeah. Okay. That's the motion. All right. Anybody want to second it this time? I see Janet. Second. Okay, are there any, is there any more discussion that people want to have? Mm -hmm. 
Bruce? Uh, Doug, I just want to ask is, uh, I, I know what the protocol is, but uh, is, is there a re requirement to have public uh, comment? Uh, I mean, I hope there wouldn't be because I think this has been a very personal thing, but uh, I, I just recognize that we haven't had well, public I, comment. That's a, that's a I'd prefer question. to have it afterwards, but, but I want to make sure that we don't drop a ball that we shouldn't drop. Yep. Okay. Um, public, any comments anybody wants to make? I see five members of the public who remain, excluding Andrew. Okay, I don't see any hands from the public, but thank you for reminding me of that, Bruce. Okay, we'll go through and vote on your motion. Uh, once again, starting with you, Bruce. I'm an I. Okay. And as a reminder, an I is that we agree to not recommend. So there's a positive to do a negative. Good. All right. Uh, Tom? I. Andrew? Yeah, just, just a reminder that the, the two motions are coupled together. So, you know, with that backdrop, I'm an I. Okay, you're an I. Janet? I. Johanna? I. Karen? I. And I'm an I. And you need to close the public hearing? Yes. Uh, I'll make a motion to, to close the public hearing. Johanna, you want to second that? I do. Okay. Any discussion? Uh, we'll go through. Bruce? Aye. Tom? Aye, sorry. Andrew. Aye. Janet. Aye. Johanna. Aye. Karen. Aye. Aye. And I'm an I as well. Thank you all. Time is 909. .09. Pat, please, I, I recognize you. Thank you. I and while I'm disappointed in the vote, I'm not surprised by it. I want to thank you for your work and I want to give a particular shout out and thank you to Chris and Nate and Rob Mora, who, while we often disagreed, were very helpful and worked hard. Um, so thanks. I hope you actually do what you're saying you're going to do. <laughs> thank you, Pat. Time will tell. The time now is 9.09 .09, or 9.10 actually. Next item on our agenda uh, was old business. And we were, I believe we're gonna, I guess, Chris, I, I heard we may not need to speak about SBR 2019-07. Uh, That's the um, good news. Yes, we so, do not need to speak about that. Would you like me to explain anything about it or just- Let me just, uh, for the record, read what it is about, and then you can tell us why we don't need to talk about it. So this is SPR 2019-07 from Amir Michi, uh, 133 and 143 Southeast Street, review and possible recommendation on location and potential screening of transformer in the town right of way prior to review by town council associated with a mixed use building containing 57 apartment units with retail space and associated site improvements. Okay, uh, Chris, why don't you give us the update? So the contractor thought that um, he had approval to put a transformer and a large switch gear um, in the place where it is currently located. Um, he didn't really understand that that was part of the town right of way. Um, in any event, um, there have been subsequent conversations 
we had a site visit. So four members of the planning board became acquainted with what was in place. But uh, Rob Mora had a, a conversation with the contractor subsequently. Um, and that was after hearing from the town manager that the town council would not accept these two things in the town right of way. So the contractor has agreed and the owner of the property has agreed to move the transformer and to um, relocate what was in the switch gear onto a building wall. And Rob Mora at this point is thinking that it can be approved administratively and will not need approval of the planning board, but he's going to think about that a little bit more. If it does need approval of the planning board, it would come back to you in the form of a site plan review application. Okay. So that's it. All right, so we don't really need to speak more about this tonight. That's right. Uh, Janet, I see your hand. I, I have been pondering this situation and Chris, were these two, um, the switch gear and the, was the, the transformer, is that because of the solar or is that, is one of them because solar and the other one just normally put in, was it just like, okay. were these unexpected? That's my question, I guess. All right. Thanks. Chris. There was no solar proposed on this property. Um, so it was not because of solar, it was because of a misunderstanding among the people who were working on this project. Um, various people thought that these things had been approved and they hadn't been. So that's that's what where it came from. Okay, all right, thank you. All right, so we'll move on. Um, time is 9.13. Uh, are there any other old business topics not anticipated 48 hours in advance? No. All right, new business. Bruce, uh, update on your research project for housing issues at college and university towns. Oh, yeah. Frankly, I wasn't prepared to do this because I rather thought we had another uh, 60 minutes of, uh, and I, I thought this is definitely going to be postponed. But nonetheless, um, uh, I think. Chris, you for I, I sent to you, Doug, and to you, Chris, uh, some documents. Basically, one was a a uh, um, a table of the uh, towns that I've identified, or cities and towns that I've identified as being uh, uh, towns like Amherst, and I put some effort into that based on uh, basically data uh, of the size of the town, the number of students. I'm not looking at uh, there. It is. Uh, that's the conversations. The other one, the, the data table is uh, is uh, that one there. So I'm in the process of filling that out. But basically, with what's there, I was able to get a sense of which of the towns of the, the there were there were you know hundreds of these. Let's say there was a. First of all, you go to a a site that says uh, hundred favorite college towns or something like that, and then you you work backwards from there. But I, I was working on the population of the town and the population of the student and the ratio, and then uh, some uh, 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 data related to median age and uh, and and, uh, and proportional of, of ownership, housing ownership. And through that, I got uh, uh, 15 towns that seemed to be uh, the most likely fits. And then I started calling around. Uh, I created a set of questions. There's about 11 questions that I had in mind for asking but all related to housing and particularly related to how they're managing student housing because the concern that i had and we all had i think was that the uh, that the the uh, any new housing that was created not any but most new housing uh, much of the new housing that would be created would be in service of the, uh, the, the 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 component that's paying the paying the most it's the most profitable so that's probably what's going to be built and I wanted to know how these towns were handling that and so I had questions related to that and I had uh, uh, and the the uh, the towns in uh, in uh, uh, highlighted in green are the ones I've spoken with the the ones highlighted purple are the two that I'm pursuing at the moment and the others are ones that I will get to in time and the ones below that are not even highlighted uh, I'm I, I'm we'll see that might uh, I might extend it to that in the future it's become very difficult to get hold of these folks uh, they, they, I, because the way that the world works now, probably particularly after COVID, 
so many people aren't in their offices, so many, uh, nobody has a receptionist anymore. You can't call up and speak to anybody. You have to somehow figure out how to break into the, uh, into the planning office. And, and I'm still trying to figure out how to do that. But I think this uh, networking through the Town Gown Association might be a way, but it's, it's become quite difficult to break, break through the, the, uh, the, the shell of planning uh, staffs. Um, Chris, I might ask you to help if there's a, if there's a network of if people, if you know people in any of these towns and so forth, that we can somehow, once I get through, I have conversations of over an hour with planning, all of the planning directors of each of these uh, highlighted green uh, towns. And then those uh, conversations have been summarized in the, uh, in the third document, which is the, uh, the notes. And uh, I just, I don't need to summarize those. I don't I mean any more than I've done. Uh, I think you can read those. But essentially, you can see what I was saying, that uh, many of these places, or the places I've spoken to, have got quite different ways of handling uh, the, the problem. And uh, I've also got a lot of data that I've uh, gotten from their websites or that these uh, folks have, have given me when I've asked for it or they've directed me to. Uh, comprehensive plans, housing studies, all this kind of thing, uh, various specific regulatory uh, um, uh, 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 ordinances and so forth. And I've been uh, gathering that in, uh, in, in folders related to each of these uh, towns as I speak to them. So briefly, that's, uh, that's what I'm doing. That's where I am. And, uh, and that's what uh, drove me uh, to uh, the motion that we uh, voted on tonight. All right. Thank you, Bruce. And I'm looking forward to hearing about the rest of them. Me too. Um, Pam or Chris, have we distributed this material from Bruce or not? I thought we had, but maybe I'm wrong. I, so I, I just don't remember, actually. There have been um, so many things that have come in. So maybe Janet could tell me whether she's received these things. Janet, you're muted. Uh, there. I'm sorry. I was staring at these numbers. Um, are you? What are you? What are you looking for? The things from the seminar? Did, 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 I thought did, that I had uh, sent uh, Bruce's email with attachments to the planning board members, but perhaps I did not. I I got this. Got I got the summary of conversations, but not this chart. Uh, Karen said she received these. Karen uh, received it. Well, there were three attachments to Bruce's email. So if okay. you received one, then you received all of them. So apparently okay, you right. did receive them. Okay, okay. that's good. Okay. okay, good. All right. Thank you, Bruce. So now we will move on. Um, Chris, is there any other new business? Not no reasonably business. anticipated. Nope. No. Okay, time is 919. Uh, do we have any Form A, A and R subdivision applications? We do, and Pam is more, um, what should I say, up to speed on those. Since I was out of town, Pam and Nate took over many of my tasks. So okay. maybe Pam can describe what this is, but it's um, I, I can just introduce it as property that's owned by Barry Roberts and he's changing property lines. And this is at the northern end of Kendrick Park. Right. And, and on this plan, north is down. For some yes. reason, these are labeled upside down. Could, could we turn it around? Well, I did it this way so that the maps all look the same. OK, forget it. I'll, this, I'll just, the I'll, site plan. <laughs> that was submitted was upside down. So I made these upside down. So they would all be consistent in the way that you looked at them, I thought. So, but I could be wrong. So these are the original seven lots. And what is being proposed is that these seven lots be made into three. So one large lot, second and three. So it's these. Yep. And one and two. And then we do have the site plan, which is here. Isn't that weird? Yeah. I'm lost. So, okay. So uh, I could jump in and just explain what the purpose of this is. 
is that Barry Roberts owns all of this property and what he's going to be doing is um, re-renovating um, a building that looks like a big old barn. It's a brown building that isn't really that visible from the road. And he's going to be uh, renovating the units that are in that building. And then there's a building behind it that he is going to, uh, I don't, I think he's going to tear it down and he's going to add 17 units, but perhaps Nate or Pam knows more about that back building, whether it's actually going to be torn down or not. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't know exactly, but right. So what Barry's done is he's made a big lot here for lot, you know, to accommodate additional lot area per unit. And he's made the two lots on Fearing Street large enough to accommodate, you know, one unit plus one additional unit. So the two smaller ones on the front. So, you know, Rob Mora and I looked at it when it came in and, you know, it's, it's, you know, I mean, everything's right. There's nothing, you know, everything meets the dimensional standards. I mean, they're all frontage lots as they were, um, you know, the two, the three now all have enough frontage and meet all the zoning requirements. Okay. All right, any objection to my signing this uh, A&R? Um, I, I just have a quick yes, question. Janet. So on the big lot that fronts um, North Pleasant Street, is there just one building and like a little garage behind it? I can't. No, there's an existing three unit structure. On the, that fronts North Pleasant Street? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so there'll be two, two, you know, two apartments essentially on one property. Okay. I mean, there's two apartments there now. Okay. Yeah, right. There's no new building being proposed. Just. Yeah. I just couldn't see what the, like, it just looked like a little garage, but thank you. All right. Uh, Bruce. Nate, are any of these lots in the uh, uh, Lincoln Sunset Historic District? Uh, I some might be um well, i mean like fearing street but you know currently there's nothing being proposed yeah all right so okay this, is, this this isn't in anticipation of a project as chris uh referenced it just you know i'm not sure when that would be brought forward yeah so okay okay i'm getting it thanks All right, any other questions or comments? All right, please raise your hand if you object to my signing this as an A and R. All right, I don't see any objections. So Chris, I guess we can make an appointment to have me sign. All right, uh, time now is 9.24. Uh, any upcoming ZBA applications we might be interested in? Um, Pam. I don't have anything new to report. Um, okay. Well, I know yes. that there is um, the Shutesbury Road Solar is probably going to go to the town clerk sometime this week, tomorrow or Friday. And there's one other, Pam, isn't there? Um, that Nate, what was the other one that you talked about last meeting? Uh, I mean, there's a solar and there's the battery storage. Battery storage. Battery storage is um, it's us. It's planning pulpit, board. Pulpit Hill. Pulpit Hill. Yep. All right. So it's mainly the Shootsbury Road solar that's coming to the zoning board. OK. So is that something we might be interested in seeing? Yes. All right. So is that a, um, that's an indication to us that we should ask them to make a presentation to the planning board, correct? I think, I think so. Although there may only be three of us who are at that next meeting. Well, you know, I think one of the reasons it's interesting is that, you know, working in the solar bylaw and all the regulations and things we're asking for, and this project will be, I think, coming in before that when we really have like one sentence 
on energy facilities. And so I think that I think I think that'd be interesting to hear about and see. Do you know what I'm saying, Chris? Yeah, I think it's a good idea for the planning board to see it. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, next is upcoming SPP, SPR, and SUB applications. I don't know what Nate told you about before, but we have AutoZone coming to um, talk about a small solar array that they're going to put on their property. Um, we have Eversource uh, redoing their station on College Street. And we have um, a house on Vista Terrace, which is in South Amherst, that is putting in a shed. I think Nate told you about that before. So that's all I have on my horizon. Okay. Great. All right, committee and liaison reports. Bruce? I have to admit that I missed the, uh, uh, the, the, the meeting and I don't think Jack was there either. Um, I, I, I was derelict. I, I went to Leo Kotke concert. Okay. <laughs> what? Wow. All right. Well, we all have to make our choices. I guess so. I'll be good uh, in the future. Andrew, anything you want to say about CPAC in your last meeting with us? Nothing about CPAC, Doug. Thank you. All right. Tom, anything about DRB? Uh, I will briefly say that we approved the um, gas tanks that we looked at today. And that was our last meeting, was to approve those. and. Um, we had no comments other than to make sure that we're securely um, closing up all the windows that are nearby. Other than that, we had no other comments or changes. So that was the, the latest report. All right. Thank you. Janet, solar bylaw. So we had a really interesting meeting about um, dual use, like which is um, you know, having solar and farms together. And um, we had people from DOER. Um, the state. And then, um, so we, it was just a really interesting meeting. And so, um, and then we had Jake um, Marley, who is a solar developer, um, small projects. Um, his companies like motto is farms first. And they, they have a, he has a project that just was built in Hadley with a farmer um, growing broccoli and kale, which do well under um, shade. And then there's all these state requirements. And so like a lot of the solar industry is basically there's all these credits that the state will give and requirements. And so they're called adders. And so if you do dual use, you get like six more cents per kilowatt or whatever. And so it's also, so it sounds great and, and it is great, but does it work? And so UMass um, Clean Energy Extension has a big uh, grant from the feds to do these as experiments to see what grows well and what doesn't. The state is kind of pushing um, certain requirements, um, you know, in terms of shading and sort of documenting what you're growing. Um, there's a whole issue about whether you can take like vegetable fields and turn them into herd, you know, herd, you just put some sheep under it or a hay field and is that enough? And so it was just, it was a good discussion. Um, and I think we're going to continue it on Friday to kind of talk and go through some more information. But it's a tough issue, and it's a tough issue in the Connecticut River Valley, where we have such great soils, and then um, we have open fields. Okay, thank you. Chris, anything on CRC? Only that uh, the CRC will be considering the zoning amendment at tomorrow's meeting. I know they were waiting for the planning board to make a recommendation before they made their final recommendation. Okay, thank you. Uh, report of chair. I guess uh, I know for I know that Tom and Andrew are going off, and I think there's some question about Johanna staying with us. So I'd like to thank you three in particular. It's been great working with all of you, and uh, good luck with other productive uses of your Wednesday nights. Mm -hmm. Bert. Or just fun times. <laughs> yeah. Um, Thanks, Doug. I would like to appreciate um, all the efforts that you made as well as um, Jack before you. But I, I also really want to comment on um, 
Chris Brestrup, and she's a neighbor of mine who is invisible in the world that I see mm -hmm. day to day, but having been a uh, witness of all the things that she's done over the last several years, I can, I, I have so much appreciation and respect for her. And I just wanted to say thank you for all you do, Chris. And um, I, I can't imagine this board or any part of Amherst actually working without you being here. So uh, I just want to say that you've impressed me and you have my appreciation. And I want to thank you for all you do. Um, and I hope you do soon get a chance to step away from all of this mayhem and enjoy um, a quieter part of your life. But um, but I thank you for all of your work. Thanks. May I respond that thank you so much, Tom. I really appreciate that. But I couldn't do my job without Nate and Pam because we're oh. a good team. We work well together. So thank okay. you. I do see, Andrew, you have your hand up. Yeah, well, you you got part of my first part. I suspect that Tom also mentioned or meant to thank Nate and Pam. Um, my years on the board have really been uh, wonderful. Uh, I cannot uh, overstate how impressed I've been by the people on the board, the opinions they bring on the board, um, their dedication and desire to just make our community more livable for all of us is uh, it's just really amazing. And the fact that everybody has not only said that, but backed it up by being, you know, on the phone or on Zoom every Wednesday for, you know, one, two, three, four hours at a time is really amazing. You guys all put, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're putting your money for your office. Sorry for the noise again. But um, uh, again, just uh, an amazing group of people. And I am extremely confident that you are helping to provide decisions for the town and make it more livable for our generation and future generations. So uh, thank you all. All right. Thank you, Andrew. And I will thank all the other members of the board who are continuing. And Johanna, I know that you're I don't know whether to say you're leaving or you're staying because I, I I know that CRC is and town council are all talking about it. So thank you. Thank you for your interest in your service. You know, I want to thank Tom and Andrew and, and also Johanna. And I know what it's like to have your fate in the balance of people talking about you. And that's a hard spot to be in, but you can live through it, obviously. And then, but thank you for all the, I mean, it's a lot of work and it's, it's just, it's a crazy, but interesting board. Yep. Okay. So thank that's you. really all I had for my report. Chris, you want to add to anything? I don't have a report except to say I really enjoyed my trip to France oh. and um, it's really good to get out of, uh, you know, the rut of being, you know, in your day to day environment and go and see somebody else's environment. And it was really fun, but I was glad to be back. So thank you. Okay. Okay. So the time is 935. Thank you all for another three hour meeting and we are adjourned. See you in a couple of weeks at your house, Doug. Yep. Yes. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.